step into the day with the dawn ringing in my ears Oh, well, I turn to my TV show No better way, I gotta get myself into gear Let's go, oh And I feel good today With my wake up in the morning espresso I feel good today It's my feel good breakfast show we are here for you and only you. You matter the most in the world to us right now. A very good morning. Welcome to it. You are live with Expresso. It's a beautiful Tuesday morning. My name is Graham Richards. My name is Jamie Lee Yes, we are here for you because it is a Health Tuesday here on your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It is indeed. And in tune with Healthy Lifestyle Awareness Month, we meet the man behind my body transformation who really just helped me along with this journey. Um, he is my personal trainer, Edwin Godfrey. So you want to... Work out with us this morning. He's going to put us through our paces. Yeah, and, and continue to inspire us because it's been amazing to watch the transformation, not only physical, but what goes with that. All the beautiful things that start to happen when you make those changes. So, so proud of you. Then, along with our physical health, obviously, we also need to keep our mental health in check. And we're going to be casting awareness on Teen Suicide Prevention Week, a critically important time here in South Africa. And we'll be chatting to the brilliant uh, clinical psychologist, Daniel Goldstone, to do just that this morning we've also got acoustic element in the house haven't caught up with the lads in ages so good yeah. to have them yeah um, and most importantly I'm surrounded by my young dream team <laughs> these gorgeous faces you look ready for battle this morning man good morning good morning to you team a very good morning to you South Africa I come along Gugusha Adams and I'm Raul the morning of course I can't thank you enough for joining us on this beautiful Tuesday as we choose to spend it with you Zanzi. Absolutely, man. <laughs> you know what? Today is a very important day for a lot of young pupils, a lot yeah. of matriculants across the country. The matric results are being released this morning. As much as there's a lot of excitement around it. And nerves, I'm sure. A, a lot of nerves <laughs> because you get to go to university yeah. or choose a career path for yourself or whatever it is that you want to do. You are moving into the next chapter of your life. But that's not the case for some unfortunately Very because true, Sam because will be met I, with some disappointment right I definitely agree with you Kukle not everybody's going to get the result they deserve but today we're talking about what do you do with that disappointment mm. and how do you deal with that disappointment if mm. you don't get the result that you wanted for me disappointment is actually a great opportunity to learn to grow and then to eventually conquer it and make you realize what you actually do want. I love so it's that. not always such a bad thing. Yes, it is a redefining moment and we need to change the narrative around failing matric. It's an opportunity to teach, to learn and to grow as Ralph said. And who knows, you could find a better person within you. Yes, well, yeah, for you guys let us know on the social media channels what you think and what your thoughts are when it comes to disappointment. And we'll be chatting to you right throughout the show. But before we get to it, let's find out what's happening first up in the news. Thanks so much, team. Uh, well, obviously, all eyes on our matric results from yesterday. The 2020 matric class has achieved a 76.2% pass rate, which is a drop of 5.1% points from the previous year. The Free State leads the pack with an 85.1% pass rate, followed by Gauteng on 83.3. And China South is the top performing district for the second year in a row. Announcing the results yesterday, Basic Education Minister Angie Mochaka said Gauteng registered six of the top 10 best performing districts. She said that she is proud of what the classes have managed to achieve despite the challenges posed by the coronavirus. And after emerging from business rescue at the end of last year, Comair yesterday announced that it would restart British Airways flights between Harare and Johannesburg. The first flight is due to part on the 28th of March and bookings open this week. Its cut price airline Kaluda.com will also resume flights from Lanseria, part of its seven-month ramp-up period. Also includes the full return of its 25 strong fleets of planes, increasing flight frequencies and adding new routes. And casting a wider gaze on the international news front, Laikapia Kenya is battling some of the worst locust plagues in decades. But startup, the Bug Picture, hopes to transform the pests into profits and bring hope to the hopeless, whose crops are now being destroyed. The Bug Picture, as it is named, is working with communities to harvest the insects and mill them, turning them into protein-rich animal feed. Founder Laura Stanford said they were trying to help these communities after their perspective uh, to see these insects as a seasonal crop that can be harvested and then sold for money. 
And U.S. plane manufacturer Boeing has recommended grounding all of the uh, 777 model aircraft, which have the same type of engine that suffered failure and shed debris over Denver and Colorado in the U.S. on Saturday. It said that 128 jets should be suspended until inspections are carried out. Flight 328, carrying 231 passengers, was forced to make an emergency landing at Denver Airport. No one was injured. The engine's failure is another blow for Boeing after its 737. Seven Max aircraft was grounded for 18 months following two aviation accidents that left 346 people dead. And now news of a further honour for one of SA's great champions and favourite sons. Sprint sensation and current 400 metre world and Olympic record holder Wade Van Niekerk has been announced as the latest Laureus ambassador. He joins an illustrious group of esteemed SA sporting icons in the Laureus family, including Bafana Bafana soccer legend Lucas Bredebe, Springbok rugby legends Brian Abana and Jean de Villiers. Of course, born in Cryfontaine near Cape Town, Van Niekerk took up sprinting in 2000 to aged at 17 and on a magical evening of track and field in Rio in 2016 Vinico uh, he betted Michael Johnson's long-standing world record set in 1999 chairperson for the Laureus Sport for Good Foundation in South Africa Mornay Duplessis said he was elated to officially welcome Wade to the Laureus family he said to have been a remarkable um, experience to witness his rise in the world of sport and his impact in inspiring South Africans both young and old he said Wade had shown tremendous tremendous character throughout his career and he's looking forward to working with him to uplift communities across the country. Laureus has raised more than 150 million euros and changed the lives of more than 6 million children and young people since 2000. We certainly wish Wade all the best on this new adventure. That's where we leave our news but a good segue into our sporting headlines. Let's start with cricket here in South Africa. The CSA T20 Challenge continued yesterday as the Lions overcame the Titans and the Knights beat the Cape Cobras. The Lions recording an 18-run victory over the Titans based on the Duckworth-Lewis-Stern method in a rain-reduced 15-over match played out at Kingsmead. In the earlier fixture, Miguel Pretorius hit two sixes and one four in the final over. Certainly has put his hand up this season. That was to help the Knights to a three-wicket win over the Cape Cobras. The CSA T20 Challenge will continue today as the Warriors take on the Cobras at 10 a.m. Then the Lions take on the Knights at 2.30 this afternoon. Staying with cricket, but a little further afield, New Zealand claimed a 53-run victory over Australia in their first T20 international encounter in Christchurch yesterday. Devon Conway's unbeaten 99 from just 59 deliveries, guiding the Black Caps to a very impressive win in the first of their five T20 matches. New Zealand recording, uh, recovering rather from 19 for 3 to post 184 for 5. Very respectable and competitive total. Australia were then bowled out for 131 in 17.3 overs. That five-match series will continue in Dunedin on Thursday. Now finally, on to tennis. I think the writing was on the wall. Newly crowned Australian Open champion Naomi Osaka moved up one spot to second in the WTA rankings released yesterday. The 23-year-old Japanese tennis sensation, of course, beat Jennifer Brady in straight sets very impressively in the Australian Open final to win her fourth Grand Slam title. Ashley Barty remains the world number one despite being knocked out of the Australian Open in the quarterfinals. That's where we leave our sport for now. Let's get our first take on the weather. Thank you so much, D, for the news and sports update. It's time for us to get the first look at what the skies have in store for us this Tuesday morning. We have asked you to send in your sunrise pictures and you have pulled through South Africa. Lech Klokonolo, Bridget from Nailstrom, shared this image of the sun rising over the town. Nailstrom, now known as Modimole, can expect a partly sunny day with a thunderstorm in spots. 29 degrees Celsius will be your maximum temperature for today. Alistair Errington from from Johannesburg shared this beautiful image of the sun rising in the horizon. You can expect a thunderstorm this morning with times of sun and clouds throughout the rest of the day. Please do continue sharing your sunrise photos with us on Expresso Facebook page. We love interacting with you and sharing them live on the show. We also have some international viewers tuned in via the Africa channel and YouTube right now. This morning we are highlighting Albany, New York. 
Albany is the capital of the U.S. state of New York and is located on the west bank of the Hudson River. Albany experiences four distinct seasons annually. Today, however, you can expect snow at times beginning in the late morning, accumulating two to four centimeters, and the afternoon will be a breezy one. We bring it back down south to South Africa. Now there has been huge excitement in the normally bone-dry Kalahari in the northern Cape after the Kurumand River started flowing through the area for the first time in more than 40 years. The last significant flow in the area was in 1976 and locals are making the most of it, bringing their children to witness the race site. Some are even lucky enough to catch fish. The abundance of water in the Kalahari is also a boost to its tourism industry with visitors streaming to the area. Meanwhile, heavy downpours in northern Limpopo yesterday have left large areas without power supply. ESCOM says a number of substations and power lines in the Bembe area have been damaged by storms and rain. Floods have caused chaos and roads and bridges were washed away. Numerous communities have also been cut off from the outside world. We get into the first look at the temperatures for across South Africa. If you find yourself in Bologwane, partly cloudy conditions expected in your area with a low of 16, reaching a high of 27. Bombela, it's a mostly sunny day with temperatures peaking at 25, but be on the lookout for some rain in parts. Pretoria, it's a mostly sunny day. 27 is your maximum with 25% chance of rain forecast. 40% chance of thunder showers in Josie Mabone, 18-25. Mahi Geng also do expect thunder showers in your part of the country 1826 are your temperatures Clegg 1825 do expect some rain Kimberley wet conditions for your part of the country as well with temperatures ranging from 16 to 24 degrees Bloemfontein your maximum is 20 from a low of 14 also do expect 66 percent chance of thunder showers a mostly sunny day in Richards Bay, reaching a maximum of 32 degrees. Peter Maritzburg, wet conditions in your part of the country with 77% chance of rain. Durban, 85% chance of rain with a low of 23, reaching a high of 29 degrees. Mtata, Molweni, 1731 are your temperatures. Be on the lookout for some thunder showers. East London, 1927. Also, grey conditions are expected in your part of the country. Cradock, it's a rainy one for you with a low of 15, reaching a high of 33 Port Elizabeth 1626 George 1423 the mother city of Cape Town still enjoying a very chilled summer's day 1924 are your temperatures it's a sunny one in Rooster with a maximum of 31 degrees Sutherland your low is 8 degrees reaching an afternoon high of 26 and Uppington coming through with the highest temperature in the country this th Tuesday 34 degrees Celsius we'll have another look at your stunning sunrise picture and the weather forecast at the top of the hour. But for now, whichever part of the country you're in, whatever the weather, make sure to have yourselves a feel-good kind of day. Uh, oh, it's definitely going to be a feel-good well, kind of day. It's wh Tuesday. Why, why are you looking like that, by the way? What's going on? Like that? Like I woke up am like I, this? Am I late for something? No, I'm going to be taking <laughs> you guys, or myself and my personal trainer, will be taking you guys to an amazing hit workout. Requires nothing. You just need to bring your body. You just need to be active. You need to be present because it is all about health. Tuesdays, you're in a feel-good okay. breakfast show. But we also have some cool people in We have like some us. cool people indeed. We've got Hey Jody and Kellen in the building. Of course, they are from Acoustic Element. We're going to be catching up with them and hearing all of the magic sounds that they produce in coming through. But of course, you gotta wait for it and stick around because they'll be coming right at you soon. <laughs> Cheers! <laughs>
It's my feel good birthday show. Welcome back. You're live with the Express Home. We are really happy this morning. Why? Because two old friends have returned. We have walked an amazing journey with them on the show. We have seen them grow from strength to strength to performing across the world and now performing online as so many artists have had to do. I'm talking about Jody Abel and Callan Peterson, who, of course, make up the phenomenal duo that are acoustic elements, a little bit of violin, a little bit of guitar, even a little bit of beatbox from time to time, and a whole lot of magic and unbelievable amounts of talent. Yes. We love you guys. You do oh, something that you. is so different. And we also just love the fact that you're just cool guys. Oh, and thank you. Thank you so we much. miss you. We miss you hosting you live on the show. So to have you back is awesome. Thank you. It's Honestly. so good to be back. Yeah. Last year, 2020, we all know what a year 2020 <laughs> was. A lot of artists <laughs> were forced to take their performances that would usually be live on the virtual space. And you have managed to perform over 40 live streams. Yeah. How was that adjustment from live to the virtual space? Well, uh, it was a big adjustment in the beginning. I mm. mean, Jody took the reins with the techno technological side of things. Um, and then the big adjustment was performing for camera as opposed to mm. performing for humans. You know, humans, <laughs> exactly. Because <laughs> you guys are a performance group. As much as you're, you're classically trained and you've got that side, the, the musical creation element of it is very exciting to watch unfold, but you are very much a performance group. So how 100%. do you trans transition? Do you imagine a crowd? Do you put your, your mother <laughs> Yeah. Do you get the dogs and the cats to sit there behind the camera? How do you how do you muster that same level of, of performance? Look, it's, I think very much we relying on each other for energy, for number one, and then we just have to. We, we've got years of experience behind us, so luckily we're like, okay, we know what to do. We know what pros, not yeah. to do. Mm. I think the big thing was instead of reading a crowd, you kind of have to trust yourselves a little bit more and yeah. trust your judgment a bit more mm. um, because before it would be like oh yeah this is working it's going that yeah, yeah. now you don't know so because you like feed off the energy 100%. right all you see is comments so you can see by the comments okay things are going well or it's going tra tragically bad but luckily we have a great group of people on our social media and our followers are just amazing they would really help us and say literally like that mm. turn up this turn up and and we'd work with it That's we'd work cool. with the people throughout lockdown I mean, but they helped us. Four, yeah. sorted. <laughs> <laughs> but there's always, you know, things that go, you, you and live TV, just, yeah. we got a taste into your life, I'd, yeah. I like to say, because we realize that, okay, we're live, and then it's like, oh my gosh. That's it. There's <laughs> yeah. no going back. Right? You need to do what you came here exactly. to do. I mean, over the years, I'm sure you have established a loyal following. You guys have been together for 10 years since you started the band. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. 2021 marks that moment for you. I'm sure you have experienced so many great moments. Can you please share some of those with us? Oh, I mean, <laughs> where do we begin? Yeah. Um, the, the, the traveling is the big thing for us. Mm. It's, it's really seeing the crowd reception to, to our music overseas, mm. to local music overseas. I mean, one of my best memories was playing the national anthem in uh, Santorini. Santorini. Yeah. Oh. And wow. like the guests knew it. They were just like, this is a dick, you know? It was a moment. Also, if I just have to hop onto that, like also playing, uh, also in Cape Town for a lot of international stars. Mm. We've played for Justin Bieber, DJ Snake, we've played for John Legend, Mariah Carey has been our, in our presence, in our, oh. in our audience. We've mm -hmm. played for, help me. <laughs> Ronan Keating. <laughs> <laughs> but there's been some amazing people. And uh, yeah, getting some recognition from people like that, I mean, has been epic, you know? Yeah, and I think carving a path in an area where, where you don't always achieve this level of notoriety and mm. kind of get this kind of fan base. You've been able to kind of really create a whole new genre of performance art, which is amazing. Maybe the, the advantage of this year is because you want to have global kind of footprint. You want to be online. You want to have that. You've now launched a new website that takes your kind of level of interaction to a, a whole different space. Talk us through the new website and what was the, the rationale there? Was that born out of 2020 and what you needed to do? 100%. We needed a one-stop shop for everything online. It's so obviously we, this is what 2020 taught us as you just said um, so we decided to redesign re our website and just have a place where one where you can find everything videos our live streams our music you can buy our music you can stream our music you can watch you can check out our socials you can book us you can literally do anything so everything and also relive all those live streams live streams yeah. Yeah, exactly. all episodes on there it's just 100% and, and book them I don't know if you said oh, that yeah. and, <laughs> and book them I don't know if you said that I loud enough I've heard that but yeah. in 2021 
and, and book them, and, and, and book and, and, them um, to have a live performance because there's there's nothing quite like seeing you guys unleash your talent. I can't. That's the wait. best way to to describe it because it is. I'm, I'm sure what it starts out as is never how it ends up mm. because every performance is completely different from our wonderful experience with you guys. So thank you so much for being here in the thank flesh wow. and in person. It's okay. a sign of 2021. That's the direction that we're headed. So good to have the lads here from Acoustic Element. Mm. They're going to be performing just for you. So brace yourself. It's going to be a magical morning. And we know music and fitness does go hand in hand. What's one track that really gets you going? So Beyonce, anything. But I think actually the song Power from the Black is King album. Yes. That, that song, like when I'm running, I'm like, they won't take you the power. It's I, amazing. And you? I feel mine is definitely, let's get down, let's get down to business. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, but listen, <laughs> have you ever wondered how to take active wear from your workout to working from home or maybe just running errands? Well, of course, our beautiful fashion and beauty editor Knox Marth is here to show us exactly how by elevating this athleisure look. Good morning, Mama. We've good already morning. sang. We've already sang through the morning, so things are good already. Yeah, we set the tone for Tuesday. <laughs> this look, mm. athletic vibes, giving me all the vibes. Yes. Ready for fitness. I look like I'm about to run. Which I love. You look <laughs> really great, motivating me to get my stuff, but we can change this up. Okay, we can. So you what, can teach us how. So what athleisure is, right, is really using the base of your active wear and just giving it a more lifestyle feature to it. So what we can do is we can add really beautiful elements of jewelry, which I'll hand you over here. So up. black and gold is a lovely kind of accessory piece so to me the big things to changing this is obviously to add a cool sneaker which you've got over there we have some beautiful accessories here which you can do once you've finished your look so really some great ways that you can add your cool sporty kind of bag but the jacket I think the jacket really changes everything so you can go from something that is far more you know closer to your waist or a long coat and these are the two options that we have now I love this coat but I don't even think I'm ready for the coat so I that's Africa I don't think you're ready for it. So this coat is a really beautiful item with a beautiful back design here. The material, just feel the material. Do you want to try it? Mm. Oh, just try. Let's go. See what's going on because <laughs> choices need to be made this morning. So this I so love good. this because it really just adds a different element to your outfit. So something that was really very active now chase, changes into a lifestyle item. You can wear it around your waist with the belt. I mean, you feel great already. So there's something there, but if we wanted to add a pop of color for instance let's try this blazer over here a beautiful linen blazer also from um let's try this one okay. on so we can see here now these are your options and all it does it really just changes an outfit from sporty to athleisure but also giving you the ease to look professional you could actually get onto a zoom meeting and no one would know you're wearing your your active wear i can take this off and i can go for a run pop this on i'm business i'm doing everything and I like again the elements that we played around with which was the bag and the, the chain because it yes. gives that funkiness to it exactly. but you're still looking professional at the end of the 100%. day. 100%. So choices need to be made here I think. It's Tuesday, it's Tuesday of course you can help us decide okay you can choose either this one over there which I'm feeling it's it's the vibe but also this Cherise pink jacket that, which do you think will finish off my athleisure look all you have to do is head on over to the Expresso Facebook page right now and cast your vote we can't wait to see which one you choose Knox always so good to have you but you have to stay right here to find out what you Mzanzi is going to choose we'll see you in a moment Thank you. 
Yeah, I've been playing in a while, so I don't think That's me beatboxing. Okay, um, Greg, I'm just sending them to the um, interview quickly. Then we can continue after this. Huh? Oh, yes. Wait, 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 wait. Are you guys still mic? Yes, they are mic. Welcome back, you're still locked in, it's your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's Tuesday and we're choosing to spend it with you. And now we are about to have a lot of fun with Acoustic Element. They're joining us for the entire day and we're kick-starting our Tuesday morning with them. But before they perform though, we decided to play a little bit of a game, break the ice, you know, just get us into that studio feels. And of course, this game, you might know about it already, it's called Guess the Lyric. Right, so how it works, gents, is I'm going to give you a line from a song, right? And with some missing words in the lines, you need to figure out what the missing words are number one okay. and then on top of that you need to try and then figure out what the song is and play it does that make sense oh you can play it. <laughs> <laughs> so not only am i testing your ability to just play a random song at will which is a skill on its own you need to still try to figure out what song you're going to be playing makes sense okay you got ready for this guys it's, it's happy tuesday morning <laughs> <laughs> Look, in your defense, this game is hard, okay? And not many yeah. people get it right. So even just getting one or two, that's right. you winning. Okay, cool. So let's that's start cool. it off, right? So your first sentence goes like this. The words are, you're crazy and I'm out of my mind because something loves something. Love your curves and all your edges. That is a song. Those are the lyrics in the song. Because all of me loves all of you. Yeah! <laughs> but you gotta sing it in a song. What is the song? Come on, guys. <laughs> I love it. I can hear it. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I'm not gonna sing. <laughs> I don't wanna ruin everyone's tears. I love it, guys. It's of course John Legend in the yeah. building. You absolutely nailed it. If anything, uh, no, no. I like that tradition even more. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I like you. that one. All right, we actually good. played that for John Legend before. Are you serious? Yeah. That's no ways. Yeah. Oh wow. That that's how I knew the lyric. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I see I know you. This, I know this. <laughs> Casual. I, I just played for John Legend. Casual. Okay. Second one. You guys are good at this, man. This is. I need to. I need to challenge you. All right. So okay. the next one is. Oof. So I will. So I'll something. Whoa. Ten thousand miles into the dead of the night, uh -huh. into the dead uh -huh. of night, till I run out of something for you, baby. Ten thousand miles. Hmm. Interesting. The lads are thinking. Acoustic element. We're gonna give them ten I more thought seconds. It was, I will walk five hundred. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm like gonna that know one. that one. Um, no, I actually don't know that. Eh? So, is it Justin Bieber? I don't know. So, 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 I'm, I'm also struggling here. I'm trying to think which this one is. So, I'll drive 10,000 miles oh, in the dead of the night. Oh, come on. I'll run out of for you, baby. Come on. That's good. That's, we, we, we can be better than this. Yeah. Yeah, I'm feeling it. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, here we go. So, I'll drive. <laughs> I love it, I love it, I love it. That is two points for acoustic element. You guys are sounding absolutely incredible. I've got three more questions for you guys. Let's try to step it up a bit here now. Yeah. So, your next one is, you ready for this? I found a something for me. Sorry, no, yes. I found a something for me. Oh, darling, just dive right in and follow my something. I feel oh. like you're really bad at lyrics. No, nah, like, just think about it. I found okay. a something for me. Oh, darling, just, oh, darling, dive, right just dive right in. Oh, oh, um, I found a love for, for me. me. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Follow my lead. Yes. Mm. Yeah, we're kids and we found in 
love. Yes, yeah. man. You guys are making yeah. me want to sing, and I can't even sing. I'm just wanting to like break out here. I love it. I love it. I love it. Absolutely nailed it. That's from it, of course. And now the next oh. one. You guys are yeah, nailing so this. On. Nailing it. Loving yes. it. Go, Khaled. This is, I think, the best result we've ever had in this game so oh, far. Wow. So you guys are already owning it. Anything you get wrong with this doesn't even matter, but let's test it out anyway. So the next one is, I'm off the something end. Watch as I something in. I'll never meet the ground. Watch as I Oh, it's too easy. It's too easy. Who is it? Come on, guys. Yep. Bradley Cooper. Yes. That's the one. That's the one. Yeah. Okay, two. <laughs> Nail it, guys. Nail it. I, you know what fascinates me the most about this is literally watching your minds, figuring out the song and then the line and then looking at the key yeah, and yeah. then somehow making that materialize with the violin and the guitar. Absolutely magic, guys. I've got to give you one more. Thank you. Let's send this off for the big challenge. All of my heart is in something. Ooh, na, na. And uh, he took me back. To, yeah, I, I don't even need to finish. It's too easy. Havana, ooh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm in my Anna. Yes. Anna, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, this is the one. Oh, my heart is, my heart is in Havana. Uh -huh. Ladies and gentlemen, acoustic element in the building. They will be joining us later on the show, of course, to deliver even more of this brilliant, brilliant magic. But guys, everybody, a massive round of applause. You were absolutely brilliant. And if that is not enough of an icebreaker, I don't know what is, but boys, I cannot wait to hear you live on the show. I'm so excited, but thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'll let you get practicing. Shut Can't up. wait. <laughs> See you soon. <laughs> Earlier this morning, we asked you to choose between two fabulous jackets to finish off Jamie's athleisure look, and the votes are in, and it is time for you to see what you chose, Mzansi. Jamie, come in. Oh, hey, hey, everybody. <laughs> I woke, I really woke up at this You really this did. Is, you look beautiful. This is a vibe. I knew South Africa was Gonna, gonna have a run for their money because yes. both options was amazing. Everything fitted with the look. But of course you went with the Cherise pink and I really love it. But of course, let's check some comments. Yeah, we put it on our uh, Facebook page. We asked you to help me elevate my look. We had 21% going for the snakeskin coat. Still love it. I'm still gonna have an opportunity to win <laughs> on the show. But the pink blazer, pink blazer with 78.6% came through and we are ready for a Tuesday Knox. Thank you so much, but also Pleasure. thank you to you, South Africa. And of course, you can shop all of these items as well as the latest athleisure collection at Woolworths in store, online, or on the app. Stay tuned because I have a workout coming up that you do not want to miss. We'll see you in a moment.
Free as a breeze is the new Suzuki Vitara Brezza. Now the dream of owning this freshest SUV is as real as the touch screen with reverse camera and automatic climate control that make you right at home in the sun or in the snow. Starting at 244,900, it's got looks to burn, practical options from cooled upper glove box to keyless entry with push start LED projector headlamps with daytime running lights and cruise control. In your new Suzuki Vitara, it just gets Brezza. It's my feel good work show. Ah, uh, yes, of course. Welcome back. We are live. It's Tuesday, of course, and this is your feel good breakfast show. Now, it's the month of February, and we're encouraging people to follow a healthy lifestyle from eating correctly to getting enough physical exercise. Now, Jamie Lee Domberg made the decision to live a healthy lifestyle last year, and one person who has helped her reach her goals is personal trainer Edwell Godfrey. And he joins us this morning as we continue to commemorate Healthy Lifestyle Awareness Month. Brother, how are you doing this morning? Good, good, good. I've got to say, well done, well done. Thank you've been you. you've been working my gal over here. I'm very, very proud of it. <laughs> Thank but you. listen, talk me through this journey that you've had with Jamie as a personal trainer. Where did it all start, and and how's it been? Yeah, so I met Jamie last year when I was personal training in, at Virgin Active, and then we started talking, and then she said she's always wanting to start this journey, and she needs someone to push her. So I said, let's go, and then I started my own thing. And then from there it went on and yeah, it's just been growing and growing. And I noticed that you started your own thing. You mentioned you had a version before, but now I see you've kind of created your own little system. Obviously lockdown presented a few challenges, but you seem to create uh, opportunity for yourself in the process, right? Yeah, yeah definitely it worked. It worked out for me because uh, lockdown, like COVID, had a, a major impact on a lot of personal mm. training and, and the fitness industry in, in general. So I just decided just to wing it and just go for it, take the risk. I love that. So look, I mean, Jamie's been making some progress, but I want to get some inside scoop from you now oh. that I can see the man. <laughs> don't be shady, right? yeah, don't so, be shady. So now I want to know, like, what kind of, like, what kind of person, what kind of client is Jamie when you're training her? Is she, does she complain a lot? Is she a nagger, a moaner, or is she just like, I can do anything. Give me another challenge. <laughs> there is times in the beginning of the workout, Jamie's like, oh, fine, let's go. Let's go, Eddie, let's go. Let's go, I got this, I got this. Then towards the end, last round, last few rounds, he's like, ah, Eddie, no, man. What's going on? No, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about challenging him. So here's the thing. I, li I like a trainer that pushes me, but I and I've trained with you before. Um, I like to complain, and it's my voice of outlet. It's like, yes, I love this, but I'm also going to challenge you, and I have to complain the entire way through. I mean... Your sessions would be boring if I didn't complain the entire way too. <laughs> I guess I, mean, I guess it's a good sign that you are challenging us. So, yeah. so well done to you. But I've got to ask you, I mean, it's, it's, it's February. We're celebrating a healthy awareness and, and awareness month as it is and trying to promote it too. So how would you say or what would you say is your idea of a healthy lifestyle? What does that mean? And, and how would you encourage people to live that lifestyle? Yeah. So first and foremost, it's just having a good, well-balanced diet to start off with. That's your foundation. I mean being more active, whether it's exercising three to four times a week. And then yes, that's about it. Okay. If you have those two together, that's your, your, your lifestyle change and getting better as a person and you're changing your body. Brilliant, I couldn't agree more. Well, look, I don't want to keep you guys up and running because apparently I'm very, very lucky today. I've been given the day off. Yes. And we've got a specialist in the building, of course. So I believe myself, uh, I get to watch while you take Jamie through her paces and show the rest of them, Zanzi, what work you've been doing on it to kind of get her into this beautiful shape that she is in. And uh, of course, I'm so keen to see you training again because we used to train back in the day as well, man. We used to race as lifeguards. So it's so good to see you. But let me not take up any more of your time, guys. You get to it Let's while go. I sit Let's down go. here and, and, and watch the show, of course. You guys Guys ready? <laughs> Absolutely. Now, of course, my personal trainer, Errol Godfrey, has been incorporating a lot of HIT uh, style training in our workouts. It has really been uh, a way for me to get into fitness, get into the shape that I'm in. But right now, you're going to be taking us through a workout this morning yes, for Tuesday. So, what do we have planned for today? So, today we have four exercises. So, we're doing 30 seconds each. Okay, so it's going to be a full body workout, working a little bit of legs, core, and upper body. Okay? So the first exercise we're going to do is squats. Okay. They're side squats, so we're just standing in, in the squat position. Feet nice and wide part, okay? You're going to take a step out. Whoa. Okay. Why do I feel nervous training with you on TV versus <laughs> training with you at home? Because it's the pressure's a, 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 on the, now. The pressure's on. The pressure's on. <laughs> South Africa gets to see what you put with you. Also, don't don't be offended by his face. He never smiles. This is just his way <laughs> of putting me through my faces to intimidate me. Okay. So side squats. Here we go. Here we go. Let's go. Stepping out to the right. Yep. To the left. 
Here we go. And, and in. Moving that hips back as you're doing that. Go, Jamie! And you said 30 oh. seconds on. It's all 30 up seconds. And timed. Go. South Africa, I hope you're following along with us this morning. You get to choose how you start and wake up your day and your your body. And we hope and we are encouraging you to live a healthy lifestyle. That was 30 seconds on. Nice. What is the next so one? Nice one. We're going to jump quick into it. Okay. Nice. 10 second break. And then we get into the next one. The next one is walkouts. Okay. Or inchworms. Okay. okay. So what are you going to do? Then on your you feet. Take you're going to walk out with your, Just give me a second. with your hands down to the floor, into the plank. And then up again. Right. So you're just walking we're out. This down. is going to work that arms, that core. Up and down. Bring it up. For the 30 seconds. Already burning a sweat. Rao, how are we doing? Are you... The core will be working here. There you go. Bring it up. Nice. Pumping it up. Almost there. And last one. Nice. Perfect. And this is the part where I start complaining because my heart rate is pumping. It means I'm working, but we're only just getting started. Go, what is the next one? one? <laughs> Third one we go. We're on the floor again in that plank position. We're going to do plank jack. So that's just moving the legs apart, okay? It's out, in, out, in. Here we go. Right in that core. Burning that fat there in that core. Yes! Keep that back nice and straight. Pushing through. Too engaged. 30 seconds of work, and then you get to rest it out in your little break. So keep going, keep pushing. Almost there, and lovely work. Here we go, quick little Okay, we up. have a last one to pump up the heart rate. What is that? Here we go, the last one is star jumps, okay? Just star. basic star jumps. Arm and legs apart, okay? Here we go, let's go. Here we go. Almost fell, but it's okay. Yes, yes, you can Here we go. I'm loving that form. Keep pushing. Again, guys. This is my personal trainer, Edward Godfrey, with a hit workout for this Tuesday. You can follow along. Thank you so much. Your heart rate is pumping. You're pumping. looking at your watch? Pumping. Thank you so much. He's really been a part of my journey, my amazing transformation. But of course, right now, now they've got fitness down, it's time to head into the kitchen for some nutritious meals. <gasps> With love by Clover. I'm going to give Jamie just a second to catch her breath after that workout. We know that good nutrition plays a major role in leading a healthy lifestyle. Some might even say that it's 20% fitness and 80% diet related. I think we've proven that on the show. So as we continue to unpack our very own Jamie Lee's healthy lifestyle patterns that have led to her looking and feeling great, she shares one of her go-to recipes, a Clover Nolak spiced chickpea bowl. I mean, given the basics, She's now going to be whipping up the spiced chickpea and I'll, I'll assemble the bowl here. How are you, how are you doing? I'm good. You know why I love this? It's because it's exactly what you need after a workout like that. For sure. You know that moment when you want to cook something nutritious, you didn't take the chicken out <laughs> of the freezer and you have 15 minutes to make something? Well, this is it for you, South Africa. So what we're going to start off with is right here. It could be served cold. It could, could, could be served hot. Today we're doing a hot bowl. And I think so, so many people think that you need to make a smoothie bowl. You can actually make it a savory bowl as well. And I love, I love this because yeah. you get to create a bowl. Luca loves this. My mom loves it. And the, the rule of thumb when I'm cooking is make sure that there's carbs in, make sure that there's fats in, and make sure that there's protein. Th those three things I promise you is all you need every single day in every meal that you have. So right now, catching my breath still, we have some red onion going in with some olive oil. You want to make sure that that gets a nice little golden brown. That is in. I can't believe you're actually talking at all after that. Yeah, and I am. Your, your, your fitness level is actually... Uh, Pretty, pretty impressive. Because it's the food girl. that I'm eating. Yeah, exactly. It's all down to the chickpeas. We're going to go in with our uh, yes, spices. Chili so mm. chili powder, some paprika, some cumin, coriander. And that goes in. Just going to give you that nice. And this is every Monday night's dish. Promise you, 
every that, Monday I, we have a Sumitri Monday. I love a little bit of cinnamon in there just to give it something different. I mean, you can obviously emit or go heavier with any of the, the spices, but I like this, this balance. Yeah, I've got to ask because, you know, obviously we've watched the transformation and I can see a difference in your nature. Does it feel different? How different do you feel now if you have to think back? I suppose it's been in increments, so it's difficult to kind of go then and now. Yeah. Um, but how do you feel? Do you know what? I feel good. I feel just mentally, physically so good. But it's always that moment when I have to look back and I have to look at pictures that they're just showing mm. right now. And then I'm like, oh, oh my wow. word. It, then it hits me. You've actually transformed so much, not just physically, but mentally. Everything has just been such a huge adjustment and a change and a transformation. And I'm loving it. It, it is a journey. It's not a destination. It's not like I'm done now. Now is where the work comes in. Now it's maintaining. It's making sure that I always educate myself because there's so much knowledge when it comes to food, to training. So you you always have to be open about that and make sure that you educating yourself with regards to those steps. Well, that's what, I mean, it's great having like a, a, a Ryle on tap because every day we, we plug him for, for all of these like insider infos and now it's about building the muscles and I, I love that. And I love the fact that we're whipping up something here that really is beautiful and healthy and also um, if you suffer from lactose intolerance, this is a great one. So if you do have that intolerance and want to enjoy dairy again, then the Clover No Lac range is ideal. The Clover no lack, you can still enjoy dairy again with a very versatile lactose free range of milk. They've got mast, they've got the dairy snack, which we're using today. And Clover No Lack is pre treated with the enzyme lactase, which breaks down the lactose and then makes it a lot easier for your system to digest and also very nutrient rich. They've got added calcium and vitamin D. So it really is the ideal dairy replacement. Okay, so, okay. so you, your some, chickpeas have gone in? I had some garlic and ginger in there as well. You want to have that. It's good fighting uh, ingredients in there. Good for colds, flus. Great for the immune, yeah. Definitely. So we threw our chickpeas in. Depending on the crunch that you want to go for is how long you'll simmer it. I okay. will recommend about five minutes maximum because you don't want it to be too soft. And then you're going to have your tomato going in there. This is going to cook down for about three to four minutes again, and then we are going to start constructing our bowl. Assembling, okay, well yes. I'm gonna start on that mission right now. We've got a beautiful avocado that's been sliced up for us. I'm gonna and separate gonna go that there. guy. So your base is very simple. You could go with quinoa, you can go with couscous, you can go with brown rice. My go-to is always brown rice, but we do have uh, some quinoa here today. That is gonna be our start, our carb for the day. And then you are going to put your chickpeas on the side. You can oh, make that's it look come out beautifully, yeah. that, is, that is the end result. <sighs> I'm already hungry. <laughs> now, I love the fact that, because if you're going to up the intensity with your, like with the hip, the hit workout kind of style, you do need to put something back in. Definitely. Especially working like the 12 hour days that we do. Um, a little bit of cucumber. I'm just going to use this guy too. Okay, and then I have a secret to share with everybody. So, I mm -hmm. do not use mayonnaise. I just don't use mayonnaise. And what I've found is that I use yogurt. And that's my replacement, because you have the good fats, you have the vitamin C going in there. So we're using the clover no lac -like, uh, yogurt oh, as a snack. base yeah. to actually bring it all together. So you can add that with some lemon, uh, lemon. lemon zest. So and then your avo perfect. right on top. I'm gonna just leave. Oh, you're going with the whole avo? You can, you can yeah. portion it out as well if you want to. <laughs> but like G, he's putting in everything. That is where your fats come in. And then you're gonna do a bit of a dollop of the yogurt. Oh, no lack. I'm gonna... And I mean, if you wanted to go with a clover mass as well for the tangy taste, you could also use that, but this is just a good replacement to go for a savvy. So again, you don't have to go sweet with your bowls. You can also do something like this, perfect for Monday nights, meat-free, perfect for dinner, after a workout, fresh lemon going in there. And then finally, just to ruin it all, a little bit of coriander. No, I joke, I joke, I'm a corianderist. We know this on the show. Um, but that what do you looks think about that? looks beautiful. It looks fresh. It looks balanced. Like you say, it's got the protein. It's got the carb. It's got the really good fats in it as well. Some immune boosters in there. It, it really is a beautiful, complete meal. I like this. I've never been more proud to make something for you, South Africa. <laughs> but if you missed out at any of the steps, here is a quick recap. Beautiful. Look at that. Mm.
Made with love by Clover. With love by Clover. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back to your feel-good breakfast show, Expresso on SABC3. If you have just joined us, well, you are just in time for that dynamic duo, Acoustic Element. They've performed in 17 cities across 10 countries, earning them worldwide success. Success they attribute to hard work, playing multiple gigs in one night, and remaining committed to their own sound. Here to cover the Billboard Hot 100 hit, Holy, by award-winning singer and songwriter Justin Bieber, featuring Chance the Rapper, is the multi-talented musical duo, Acoustic Elements. <laughs>
That was absolutely stunning. Acoustic Element is still in the building to elevate the feel goodness here on your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso with two more performances. That was so beautiful and so cool, and you executed it so, with so much swag, man. Oh, I am obsessed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Acoustic elements here on your Feel Good Breakfast show. Now time for us to take a look at those news headlines just after 7 o'clock. Uh, we start off here at home where a new clinical trial overseen by researchers at the University of Cape Town is testing the efficacy of a new COVID-19 vaccine with a different approach. The HAD5 T-cell vaccine holds promise to protect against current and future variants, including the worrying new variant which is prominent in South Africa. The first phase of this clinical trial involves administering the vaccine vaccine through the Welcome Center of Infectious Diseases Research in Africa's Kailicha site. And if successful, the T-cell vaccine could be administered as a supplementary booster in pill form to offer better protection. And the 2020 metric class has achieved a 76.2% pass rate, which is a drop of 5.1% points from the previous year. The Free State leads the pack with an 85.1% pass rate, followed by Gauteng on 83.3%, with Swanee South coming through at the top performing uh, uh, as a, the top performing district for the second year in a row. Announcing the results yesterday, Basic Education Minister Angel Mutsekha said Gauteng registered six of the top ten best performing districts and she said she is proud of what the class managed to achieve despite the challenges posed by the coronavirus. Meanwhile, in international news, Japan appointed a Minister of Loneliness this month to tackle the country's rising suicide rates. Last year, suicide rates in Japan rose for the first time in 11 years, particularly among women. More people died from suicide in Japan in October than the total of uh, COVID-19 deaths up to that point in 2020. The new Japan Minister of Loneliness will try and reduce loneliness and social isolation among residents. Loneliness has long been an issue in Japan. Often discussed alongside hikikomori or people who live in extreme social isolation. Kenya is battling some of the worst locust plagues in decades but startup The Bug Picture hopes to transform the pests into profits and bring hope to the hopeless whose crops are being destroyed. The Bug Picture is working with communities to harvest the insects and mill them, turning them into protein-rich animal feed. Founder Laura Stanford said that they were trying to help those communities alter to their perspective to see these insects as a seasonal crop that can be harvested and sold. And now news of an 81-year-old who conquers the world's highest peaks. Talking about a healthy lifestyle, 81-year-old Carlos Soria of Spain must surely be harboring some or other secret in his uh, with this regard because he can lay claim uh, to the fact that since turning 60, he has summited 11 of the 14 highest peaks in the world. Soon, he plans to climb Daolegiri Mountain in Nepal and Shisha Palma in Tibet. If he manages both, he will become the oldest person to have reached the summit of the world's 14 highest peaks, all of which surpass 18, uh, rather 8,000 meters. Carlos, a retired apostle uh, born near Madrid, has uh, climbed throughout his life. And in the past two decades or so, his feats in breaking a flurry of age-related mountaineering records have made him absolutely unique. And he became the oldest person to summit Mount Everest at the age of 62. By age 70, he had completed a sense of the highest peaks on all seven continents. And Carlos adds, I quote, the record I am proudest of is that I have never suffered serious frostbite and I never had to be rescued. I have always gone up and come down each peak on my own two feet. Salute, Carlos. That's where we leave for now. Here's a look at what's happening in sports with Graham. <laughs> Thanks so much, Tubsy. Let's kick it off with a cricket here in South Africa. The CSA T20 Challenge just produced some fireworks. Continued yesterday as the Lions overcame the Titans and the Knights beat the Cape Cobras. The Lions recording an 18-run victory over the Titans based on the Duckworth-Lewis Stern method in a rain-reduced 15-over match played out at Kingsmead. Then in the earlier fixture, a man who certainly put his hand up this season, Miguel Pretorius, pit two sixes and one four in the final over to help the Knights to a three-wicket win 
over the Cape Cobras. The CSA T20 Challenge will continue today as the Warriors take on the Cobras at 10 a.m. and then the Lions meet the Knights at 2.30 this afternoon. Staying with cricketing news but a little further afield, New Zealand claimed a 53-run victory over Australia in the first T20 international match in Christchurch yesterday. Devon Conway's unbeaten 99 from just 59 deliveries, guiding the Black Caps to a very impressive win in the first of their five T20 matches. So New Zealand recovered from an, a very shaky start, 19 for three at one point, to post 184 for five. It was just too much for Australia, who are bowled out for 131 in 17.3 overs. That five-match series will continue in Dunedin on Thursday this week. And then finally, on to tennis news. We expected a bit of a move. Newly crowned Australian Open champion Naomi Osaka moved up one spot to second place in the WTA rankings released yesterday. The 23-year-old Japanese tennis sensation, of course, beat American Jennifer Brady in straight sets very impressively in the Australian Open final to now win her fourth Grand Slam title. Ashley Barty remains the world number one despite being knocked out of the Australian Open in the quarterfinals. We'll touch on those headlines again in about an hour or so. Right now, let's take another look at some of your beautiful sunrise vistas and get a take on the weather. Thank you so much, G. Let's get into it. We have asked you to send in your sunrise pictures and you have pulled through. Starting off your 7 a.m. weather update, Katlejo Tempa from Polokwane shared this picturesque sunrise photo. Polokwane can expect a maximum of 27 degrees. Laura Pile from uh, Chat. Chats with Durban shared the silhouetted photo of the sun rising over her area. Durban can expect showers in areas reaching a maximum of 28 degrees Celsius. Please continue sharing your sunrise photos with us on the Expresso Facebook page and you may just see your picture featured in one of our weather segments. We can't forget about our international viewers that are tuned in right now via YouTube and the Africa Channel 2. We are giving a little highlight um, of Casablanca the largest city in Morocco. Casablanca is Morocco's chief port and one of the largest financial centers in Africa. Casablanca has a hot summer Mediterranean climate with an average of 72 days of precipitation annually. Today you can expect a sunny day reaching a maximum of 19 degrees. On to some interesting weather news, NASA has released stunning videos of its Perseverance rover landing on Mars last week on which we reported extensively. The movies cover the final minutes of the hair-raising descent up to the point where the robot's wheels make contact with the ground. The sequences show a roll of dust and grit being kicked up as the vehicle is lowered by its rocket backpack to the floor of Jezero Crater. Perseverance was dispatched to Mars for tuned with cameras, seven of which were dedicated to recording the landing. Their imagery represents vital feedback for engineers as they look to improve the technologies used to put probes on the surface of the red planet. All the cameras employed in the descent and landing were off-the-shelf rugged sports cameras with next to no modifications. We bring it back to the land of Mzansi with your temperatures. Starting off at Polokwane, 25% chance of rain is forecast in your part of the country. Bombela, your temperatures range from 21 to 29 degrees. Pretoria, it's a partly cloudy day, 19-27 with 25% chance of rain forecast. 40% chance of thunder showers in Johannesburg this Tuesday. Mahikeng, 42% chance of thunder showers with a low of 18, reaching a high of 26. Glegstorp, your temperatures range range from 18 to 25. Kimberly, your maximum for the day is 24 from a low of 16 degrees. Be on the lookout for some thunder showers. Bloemfontein, wet conditions in your part of the country as well with 66% chance of thunder showers expected. Richards Bay, it's a mostly sunny day reaching a maximum of 32 degrees, but be on the lookout for some drizzle as well. Peter Marisburg, it's a rainy day with 77% chance of rain forecast. Durban, South Africa's playground, 85% chance of rain with a low of 23 reaching a high of 29 degrees in Tata 17 is your low and your high is 31 degrees East London starts off the morning with a minimum of 19 reaching a maximum of 27 degrees Cradock coming through with the second highest temperature in the country a maximum of 33 degrees with 42% chance of rain forecast Port Elizabeth you kick off your morning with a minimum temperature of 16 reaching an afternoon high of 26 George it's a mostly 
mostly cloudy day, reaching a maximum of 23 degrees. Cape Town 1924, Rooster 1231, Sutherland 826, and Uppington coming through with the highest temperature in the country, a maximum of 34 degrees Celsius. This was the second look at your stunning sunrise pictures and the weather forecast for this Tuesday. We'll have another look at the, at the top of the hour, but for now, whichever part of the country you're in, whatever the weather, make sure to have yourselves a feel-good kind of day. <laughs> Certainly, yes. Whichever part of the country you find yourself in this morning, be sure today, be sure to make it a feel-good type of day. The temperatures are looking very good in most parts of the country, but uh, it's feeling really nice and warm in the studio as well. We've got acoustic elements in the house. They're still here. They're going to be performing for us. And then we're going to be catching up with one of our loved and loyal viewers, Jeff Dantlovu, all the way out in Canada. And he's going to be telling us how he's connecting with your feel-good breakfast show. You want to make sure that you stick around for all of that. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Thanks for staying with your feel-good breakfast show, Expresso. Now, we love the fact that our viewers enjoy the show so much that we have local and international viewers tuning in on a daily basis. And this morning, we catch up with uh, one of our international viewers based in the United States of America. Uh -huh. It's Jeff Tantlovu. Jeff Tantlovu, good morning. Hey, good morning. It's good to be here. How's everybody there? You know what? We cannot complain and we love that it is so lovely that you connect with us. Firstly, we want to know what, what do you love about the show and, you know, when you came across Expresso and what keeps you coming back for more? First of all, I would like to take it from the intro and I say it feels good to be here uh, simply because it's my feel good breakfast show. <laughs> yes, yes. Sir. yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, Jeff, uh, but, but what is it really about the show that makes you feel so good? 
Uh, I think it brings back some childhood memories. I remember uh, later on in 2010, soon after the FIFA World Cup uh, of uh, the football. Uh, and I think one of the biggest things that uh, stood out to me is that uh, we traveled to the mother city in uh, Cape Town late 2010, I think that was December. And that's when I first had an encounter with uh, the express show uh, when we were driving down the coastal line and our tour guide said, hey, look at that majestic uh, building. That's where they should express show uh, uh, the life from. So I said, listen, one day I was talking to my inner self. I said, one day I'm going to be there and look at this. Ten years later, God did the thing. So I'm grateful to be here. I think one of the things that stands out to me is how Expresso has been part of my childhood, watching it each day, maybe eating some porridge, preparing to go to school. So it's good to be here today live. And that is such a beautiful memory. I think a shared one for all of us, really. I think it's incredible. And I'm so glad that we're able to connect with you and you are here now. But I believe that you are South African slash Zimbabwean. Uh, how long have you been in the U.S.? And, and what took you to that side of the world? I think uh, what took me to this side of the world, just like everybody else, is the pursuit for the American dream. I came here earlier in 2015 uh, in pursuit to do my aviation flight. Uh, studies which I later on harnessed religion Woo. together with uh, my initial course. So yeah. it has been a good ride, six years counting, and I can tell you that I've had some great memories here. Oh, mm. but I'm loving the flags behind you. Do you ever get homesick? I do. I do get homesick, uh, but uh, shout out to my parents back home. Uh, my mom, I think, misses me more than I do get <laughs> homesick because she texts me, I can tell you, and calls me every other hour. So, um, but I do try to get connected. Shout out to Expresso for keeping me linked up about what's happening down there. So you guys are a home away from home. Aww. Stunning work. Um, what is your native uh, language in Zimbabwe, Wena uh, uh, Chefta? So from my mother's side, uh, she speaks Shona. Oh. And uh, that's, that's one of the major languages in Zimbabwe. Of course. Uh, are you going to teach mm -hmm. us maybe a word or two or even a sentence? Uh, maybe say, stay tuned to your Feel Good Breakfast show in Shona and Zoe and I will try it. Let's try it. All right. I was not ready for the stay tuned, but I can teach you a word. Uh, Bo Zwangu. Bo Zwangu. Zwangu. Okay. Zwangu. So if you ever meet, uh, yes, you got it. So if you ever meet uh, a Zimbabwean Shona person and they say, hey, how are you doing? You could say, hey, Bo Zwangu Shamariangu. Bo Zwangu. Come on, boss. And you know, when you come to Cape That's Town it. and they ask you, how are you? You can say, how's it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he I knew like that, um, he, you know, he's from... You know Sonic. what, I love the fact that you didn't pick up an American twang. <laughs> you know, that's actually fascinating that you picked up on that because that's a struggle I've been with people who think I'm not even overseas because I didn't get that twist of the tongue yet. But, you know, I owe it to the roots and maybe it'll come with some time, who knows? No, but don't I'm ever lose your accent. accent don't ever yeah. lose your accent. That's what's going to set you apart in the U.S. And it will be such a great conversation mm. starter when people hear you speak and be like, oh, where are you from? I promise you, don't conform to the American twang. I will. I will stick true to the roots. Uh, and currently, I mean, I am in Canada. We are, uh, we are here in lockdown, of course, but recently... Uh, we shifted gears to a lesser level of lockdown. Here they speak two languages, French and English. So maybe that French will slightly change the accent. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay, well, you certainly are an international citizen, and I think for us as South Africans, we are just simply not used to uh, heavy snow conditions, which you are seeing or have experienced that side. Uh, maybe share some of your experiences dealing with the extremely different weather conditions that you've had there, and I know Zoe has reported on a lot of that over the last couple of days. Yes, uh, as of late, the temperatures have not been favorable, uh, especially for those in the down south Texas area. I mean, they are not used to uh, any snow activity, but uh, where I am and where I was for school before, I can tell you that uh, snow, as we love to see it in the movies, is good only on TV. <laughs> but if you are outside, it's a different story. Uh, but I, I try to bundle up and uh, stay warm. If you see me dressed up and walking these streets, you think I'm a moving wardrobe, literally. 
<laughs> oh, I love oh, that. Now, Jafta, I know you mentioned where you are at the moment. Lockdown restrictions have mm. lifted somewhat. But what is the situation mm -hmm. there right now? Like, what kind of measurements are in place to make sure that you stay safe during this time? I think all of our governments globally are doing a great job, particularly here. Uh, we had uh, a surge of cases. Um, I think that was mid-December, so they put us back on grey lockdown, which the level means curfew and uh, you couldn't visit your friends. So it has been a devastating time, especially for me, uh, as I'm an extrovert. So I vibe from other people, mm. uh, but here am I having to be uh, in strict lockdown. But shout out to my uh, primary school friend who took the time away from the West Coast to come and live with me. So that has been a, a game changer and much helpful for me to get acquainted to this whole lockdown feel. Well, give your friend a shout out. I mean, what's his name? I mean, his name is Sandile. He's probably hiding behind this green screen. Uh, I don't know if he wants to come through on here. <laughs> ah, Sandile, stunning work. Hey, before we let you go, yeah. have you uh, already um, had the vaccine administered? Have you done the vaccination there or not yet? So I personally haven't taken the vaccine, uh, mm. but uh, I have a cousin sister who works in uh, the nursing facility in um, uh, British Columbia, and she has taken the shots and hey, she's still alive. Yes. So I think we're moving forward into the future with uh, some type of preventive or maybe cure measurement. Mm. Yeah. Well, Jafta, we just want to say from your Feel Good Breakfast show, thank you so much for your committed viewership and, of course, for sharing some of your experiences with us. We do wish you nothing but success on your ventures in the U.S. and in Canada. And if you ever are back in South Africa, please make sure you come and pop by. We would love to touch base with you, hopefully when all of the COVID regulations have relaxed a bit. We would love to have you in the studio. I'll be excited to be right there. I just wanted to give a shout out to all the ladies in Zanzi and say uh, I'm opening a show soon in my DMs uh, called Hambanami. So uh, DM me to be featured and let's get this show started. This single life is not it. Okay, well, just slide it in there. Uh, Zwanaka, Zwanaka. Very much, Jeff Dantlovo. Thank you very much for that. That is beautiful, and we've been so happy to connect with you. I mean, look at Zoe. It's just like, I'm a, I'll DM yeah. you, I'll DM you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. Take care, all right? Appreciate it. Thank you. Sweet. And tell them, how's it over there in <laughs> Canada? <laughs> or Lekka. I mean, I don't know, all the usual stuff. Do you remember the, the word he taught us? Buzambu. Awesome stuff. Thank you so much, guys. Brilliant chats. What a cool guy, Jeff. Yeah, is. What a cool young guy. He's <laughs> going places. Well, I think nothing goes better with a catch up than a good cup of coffee. And it's hashtag Travel Tuesday. And we are hopping across the Atlantic Ocean from uh, Jeff's hometown on the border of uh, USA and Canada to the city of music, where it really all began in Europe, Vienna. So when coffee was brought to the Austrian capital of Vienna by the Ottomans uh, way back in the 17th century, little did they know that it would spark and turn into a rich culture around the aromatic little bean. Well, coffee houses became a place of intellectual gathering around a cup of a beautiful brew. And a typical coffee break in the classic Viennese coffee houses comprises of a long coffee, we'll call it a longo in our case, <laughs> black or paired with milk and local cakes. Oof, Sounds music too great. Much. Yes, G, like come it. on now. World Explorations Vienna Lenizio Lungo is an overture to Viet Viennese. Overture, I love yeah, that. Yeah, an nice. overture, my friend, to Viennese <laughs> Coffee houses. It's, it's offering a balanced blend of smooth and silky South American Arabicas and pairs perfectly with your Viennesery traditional Viennese breakfast pastries. Boom! And of course, gee, I'm so proud of how we've been coming along in our Nespresso journey. Yeah, Learning man, how to make all these flavors. I think we've become like man. proper I, baristas, eh? I feel more cultured as oh, a yes. result. I really do. Yes, indeed. <laughs> I know, I haven't left the studio kitchen in nine months, yet I have traversed the entire uh, world. I, I absolutely love this variant. I actually had this on my way into work with my, my okay. beautiful travel mug. I have a <laughs> no special travel mug, the best in the world. I stole that travel mug as <laughs> well and, uh, from a friend of mine because I only had one and I needed another one because they're all oh, that great. No, really when are. I go out in the mountain hiking, it's I like I made it 
in the mountain. That's how hot, that's how good, that's how fresh it is. Um, all right, so we, should, we've got acoustic elements in the house. Should we bring Jody and Kelly? Yeah, yeah so let's, let's can, bring the lads. Lads, we're going to spray nonsense. you down in the kitchen, of course. This sure. is our safe space. Let me spray you out, Nick. Uh, uh, we've got you. So, gents, we, we've <laughs> made you, um, this is part of the Nespresso World Explorations range of Lungo coffees. Okay, so the Lungo is the 110, so it's yes. a slightly longer coffee, so you get to enjoy the, the beautiful taste a little bit longer. This is the Vienna blend. Okay, so this is coming from the coffee culture in Vienna, it's a level intensity six, okay, which okay. means kind of middle of the road. And it doesn't mean that it's got a middle of the road caffeine kick, that's kind of standard with your coffee, but this okay. flavor intensity, so you should pick up a nice kind of cereal maltiness there. Give it a, give it a sip. Um, I think this will be ideal with a, you know, with a patisserie, like a beautiful, nice range of pastries. Mm. What, what pastry would you guys choose with this flavor sensation? Come on, I know there's something Look at the state of these dogs. There. They don't eat pastry. They don't eat the pastry. Like, <laughs> no, man. What protein? <laughs> I would have a croissant with this chocolate almond croissant. Oh, maybe. Ooh. A chocolate ooh. almond croissant to go with your low acidity I'm and just, the mild That's my stomach roastiness. talking as well. <laughs> yeah, no, now you've just made us all hungry. Thank you so much for that. Well, uh, can't taste the maltiness in it. It's delicious. Uh, hey, it's lovely. Yeah. Mm. It's got a beautiful cream. It frothes beautifully. This machine is absolutely the boss when it beautiful. comes to making a cup. But gentlemen, you've earned that with one beautiful Thank performance. You. Two more beautiful performances coming yep. your way. Uh, and hopefully you feel the same as us that you, and, and there's a Cape Town version on the Explorations range as well, because okay. we have, we are coffee snobs here. Um, <laughs> so you know, if we're giving it an A grade pass rate here, it really is the good stuff. So thank you, gentlemen. Hopefully this gives you the little kick that you need for your next performance. It's acoustic element aren't going anywhere. And we're certainly not going to be stopping here without coffee making either. More will flow. It'll come.
Welcome back to it, your Feel Good Breakfast Show. Expresso here on SABC3 on a Tuesday morning. Now, last week, South Africa started with its vaccination program after the first 80,000 doses of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine landed in the country from Belgium. All the excitement around that. Now, the vaccination program forms part of the vaccine rollout implementation study that has been approved for use in the country. And President Cyril Ramaphosa and healthcare workers across the country were the first people to receive the COVID-19 vaccine infectious diseases specialist dr emil reed is back uh, to give us uh, a COVID 19 update so we know what's going on in that world dr emil good morning good morning good doctor morning, guys. as tabby so mentioned mm. there's so much excitement i think it gives mm. us a sense of hope, hope. but we're going to start off with the current statistics statistics rather in south africa mm. how many increases have there been or is it decreasing in terms of the rates of COVID-19 infections? Mm. Well, we, we, we're actually so happy because yesterday was the first 24 hours we had less than 1,000 cases. Ah. I mean, that's, that's amazing. Beautiful. So we, we're going through a, a lull with regards to COVID cases at the moment. Mm. Hospitals filling up with, with regular cases, neglected cases, especially in the last few months. Mm. People didn't want to come to hospitals, mm. don't want to go there because they're scared of contracting yeah. COVID. So we're actually seeing a lot of normal neglected cases at the moment. So, so currently in the Western Cape, we're sitting with round about 7,000 active cases okay. and, and only KZN, which is sitting at round about 13 or 15,000 active mm. cases at the moment. So we way down um, and, and, and taking a break from, from COVID-19 mm. at yeah. the moment. Which is a, a really Relief, right? Yes. It does really bring a yes. sense of relief. I think we've all been very stressed and very stretched. And I think especially the healthcare workers, the frontline workers have really had it hard. Uh, but the vaccine is here now. Even though we've only got 18, uh, or rather 80,000 that were delivered. Let's talk about the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Mm. How long will it last? Well, it's a fantastic vaccine. Mm. And, and currently people consider it still to be a trial mm. um, of, of, of uh, the vaccine, but, but it isn't. I mean, the, the trials were already conducted last year in South America, in the UK, and, and also in South Africa. Mm. So, so we would like to call it a phase three mm. B open label study. Okay. And, and, and it means that, that everybody is getting the active vaccine and not a placebo uh, a group at all. So everybody's mm. getting the vaccine. Mm. And, and the only reason why it's called a trial mm. um, that is done by Sasonki, which means together, mm. um, is because we will probably only get full authorization towards the end of March, beginning of April mm. from SAPRA, which is the South African Health and Product Regulatory Authority in South Africa. Mm. And, and currently we are vaccinating doctors and frontline healthcare professionals mm. yeah. um, with this vaccine. And, and I was happy to receive my vaccine yesterday um, so I'm fully vaccinated. Is that why wow. you put a hand on And he that's does. why I've got this, <laughs> this, this <laughs> smile <laughs> about me that's good. today. So I'm very blessed yeah. to have received the, the jab. Yeah. And, and so are many of my colleagues. And, and, and currently, uh, around about 24,000 mm. uh, healthcare professionals have been vaccinated Amazing. in the last three to four days. We're moving fast. Yes, and I love that. That's what we need. I'm pretty sure you at home have questions right now about the COVID-19 updates, make sure to hit us up on 021-110-5552. Dr. Emil Reed is still in the studio to answer all of your questions live. Doctor, you just mentioned that you received your jab yesterday. Yes. What are some of the side effects that have been, you know, um, tested when it comes to the jo Johnson & Johnson vaccine? Well, I think everybody needs to understand that whatever vaccine you get, you will always have some form of side effects. Mm. It's mild. Um, it's, it's, it, it can cause a tingling feeling in your arm. Yeah. Yeah. You might feel a little bit of headache. Yeah. You might feel a little, little bit of muscle ache. Yeah. The important thing about that, if you get it, you must actually say yes. Mm. 
Mm. And, and what it means that it's actually stimulating and priming your immune system mm. to fight COVID-19 and mm. fight the virus whenever you get exposed yeah. to this particular virus. Well, we've come a long way uh, from the time that the COVID-19 uh, pandemic sort of broke to the time that we're sitting at now, where researchers have worked around the clock to come out with this vaccine and to have this vaccine arrive in South Africa, even at a small number like that, mm. is really so, so encouraging. And we really cannot wait to see that roll out. But we do encourage you to get in touch with us. Uh, any questions you yes, have please. about the vaccine and how it's going to be rolled out, the side effects and all the many other things that you might have read about it on, uh, you know, the pandemic or have heard in the news, uh, getting in touch uh, with us is what you need to do. 21 110 or our Facebook page, Expresso Morning Show, SABC3. Well, right now, we are about to inject you with some feel-goodness. Now, of course, their second performance this morning is dedicated to all of those who have lost someone, particularly during this time of the COVID-19 pandemic. The song Memories by American pop band Maroon 5 was released in 2019, and the song plays, or pays homage, rather, to the memories of a loved one who has passed on. Here is Acoustic Element with a cover of Maroon 5, Memories. Take it away, boys. <laughs> memories paying homage to all who have lost someone during this time during COVID time they are still going to be back here for another performance here on your feel good back for sure so don't go anywhere but do let us know what you thought of that performance acoustic element here on your feel good back for sure we'll see you in just a little bit
Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso here on SABC3. We are continuing with our health discussion this morning with uh, infectious diseases specialist Dr. Emil Reed, who's here and ready to answer all of your questions on the new Johnson & Johnson coronavirus vaccine. Thank you once again to everyone who has sent through their questions, whether on our social media platforms or have called in to the show right now. Well, uh, Dr. Reed, th this conversation certainly was going to be one that sparks mm. and sort of reels in in lots of interest. We've got Rose on the line uh, out in East London. Rose in East London, good morning. Good morning. Morning, Dr. Reed. Morning, Rose. What is your question for the good doctor, Rose? Once you've had the vaccine, are you immune immediately? Mm. Rose, that is a fantastic question. And, and the answer is unfortunately not. Okay. And I think people need to remember that this vaccine is not something that makes you immune to contracting COVID immediately. Mm. Okay. And, and the sole purpose of this vaccine is to protect us against complication, serious illness due to COVID infection, mm. hospitalization mm. and deaths. And, 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 and this is not a perfect vaccination by any chance. Mm. And, and should we get the jab, mm. it probably takes at 28 days or a month mm. to be 85% protective against serious COVID infections yeah. and round about 49 days before you are 100% safe of developing symptomatic complicated COVID-19 or need to be hospitalized. Yeah. So, so even if you did get the jab, yeah. you still need to adhere to mitigation strategies. Mm. You still need to wear your mask, keep physical distance and sanitize because you can contract the virus. Mm, thank you very much, Rose, for that. That was yes. a very good question. Very so good the vaccine question. is not a cure. It doesn't make you immune. Or it does do it. protects uh, you from all of those really serious complications. We've got another caller. Yes, we do. We have... Um, on that note, actually, we're going to... We don't have gonna, the caller now. We don't now. have the caller right now, but we'll get her a little later on. On that not, note, doctor, how many phases do you need to go through with the vaccine? How many doses does one need? Well, the amazing one with the Johnson & Johnson jab, you only need one dosage. Mm. And, and, and unlike the mRNA vaccines, the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine, where you need two dosages, mm. and also with the AstraZeneca, you need two dosages, which is either three weeks or 12 weeks apart mm. in order to give you maximum protection. Mm. And, and, I, and the one point we probably need to stress as well is that the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is the only vaccine that got tested with the development of the new variant in South Africa. That's that good news. A 501Y V2 variant um, and it was shown to be protective mm. against the variant as well. None of the other vaccines were tested during the development of the variant, mm. making the, the Johnson & Johnson jab currently the best vaccine for South Africa. Which is great. Well, we've got our caller on the line. It's Avril out in Durban. Avril, good morning. What is your question for the good doctor? Good morning. I have two questions, actually. Um, the first one is, if I get a flu injection, a flu vaccine, I get flu. If I don't have one, I don't normally get one. Will that be giving myself um, COVID-19? Uh, Avril, that is a very good question. And the answer to that is no, because this is not a live uh, virus. Okay. This is an inactivated virus, mm. um, DNA, mm. that is given with a vector adenovirus mm. uh, 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 um, jab that cannot cause infections in human, meaning that you will not contract uh, COVID-19 okay. and should you have these subtle symptoms of headache, muscle aches, mm. etc., mm. it's considered to be normal for a post-vaccination um, 
uh, 24 to 48 it's hours. To be expected. Yeah. That's well, Avril, certainly sounds like you're here for a consultation. You're in for it. <laughs> what is your second question for Dr. Reed? Okay, thank you very much, Doctor. Um, the other question is, how do we know if we're asymptomatic? For instance, if we have flu, we can't go and get a flu injection. So how do we know without testing first if we have the virus or does it not matter at all whether we've got the virus or not or carrying the virus? That is also a fantastic uh, question, Avril. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the, the current guidelines is if you are asymptomatic, you are fine to actually have the jab. Mm. If you are currently have been diagnosed with a COVID-19 infection and also proven to test positive for the virus while you still have symptoms, mm. you need to wait around about two to four weeks after the symptoms subside before you can get your jab mm. yeah. i hope that answers yeah. your question now we're moving to johannesburg the city of gold with neil good morning neil hi uh, morning uh sorry just correction the name is neil same as the doctor oh, oh morning. Well, hi. Morning. Morning, <laughs> morning, <Neil. laughs> okay. well what's morning, your question for the doctor um yes uh, actually it's sort of two things um i'm not too clued up on it but what i want to find out is this, this vaccine, it, it, it should never be perceived as a, a, as a cure or any vaccine um, as such. It, it, am I correct in saying it shouldn't be that I get the vaccine and boom, I'm cured? Mm -hmm. And then just the other thing I want to ask, if I've got something like, uh, for example, a post-nasal trip, right, um, like and a sore throat, can I take the vaccine or do I need to wait for that um, post-nasal trip or, or to, to clear up? Okay, Emil, that is, that is a fantastic question. Yeah. And as we said with the previous caller, this is not a curative vaccine. Mm -hmm. and, and after the vaccine, you need to continue with the mitigation strategies. Mm -hmm. and, and also, I mean, it only protects us against the severe symptoms, hospitalization and, and death due to COVID-19 infection. Mm -hmm. um, pertaining to the second question, um, if you have a post-nasal drip, that is usually part of a chronic allergic condition, which, which happens on a yearly basis or whether it's seasonal, whether it's yearly. Mm. Um, and, and that is no contraindication for receiving the jab. So Emil, you, you will be safe if you uh, accept the offer for getting this jab, even if you have a, a post-nasal drip. Well, thank you so much for that, Emil. Hopefully that answers your questions. Let's go to Soweto. Let's yes. go to Soweto and to fire. Let's talk to Pinky in Soweto. Pinky, good morning. Pinky! Good morning, Pinky. Uh, seems we're having a bit of a challenge mm. with uh, getting through to Pinky there. And it's very, very important to mention, right, because I think that the biggest misconception really that people do have mm. is that the vaccine, A, is either going to cause a lot of complications mm -hmm. for them, is going to bring about a lot of the COVID-19 symptoms first and really throw them off, or two, it's going to cure them in mm -hmm. the event that they do have mm. uh, some COVID-19 symptoms. What is your key takeout and the, really the one thing that you want to leave everybody with uh, as far as the COVID-19 vaccine is concerned? I think the important thing for people to, to understand that the reason why this vaccine have been developed is because of, of everybody all around the work, world working together. Mm. And, and, and the perfect vaccine would be a curative vaccine, a vaccine that will eradicate, that will block you from being infected with COVID mm. and will block you from transmitting the virus. Okay. This virus, uh, this vaccine is not the perfect vaccine yet and we will probably in the next four or five years ah. get to a, the perfect vaccine. But our, our biggest burden of of disease was with complications, serious infections, hospitalization, overwhelming our facilities. Mm. And that is where this vaccine is extremely important. Mm. It will protect our healthcare facilities mm. and should not be viewed as a cure. Yeah, but a very important question that I'm pretty sure everyone is asking right now, how much is it to get the vaccine, mm. doctor? 
you, you, you mean how much Does money it cost? Yes, yes it, it, it is. Because currently the vaccine is available freely mm. and free of charge to healthcare professionals. Yeah. And, 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 and the, the medical aids have, have also been part of this discussion. So, so they will cover it in full as mm. well. But, but for now, the, the vaccine will be free of charge. Mm. Well, certainly you have to be a member of the HPCSA at the moment in order at to be moment. able to qualify to get that vaccine. And really, we are wishing all of our frontline workers, and that's specifically mm. speaking to our healthcare workers who are going to be getting vaccinated, and that's continuing to roll out as we speak. Uh, all of the best um, with all of this. And we really do take off our hats to everybody that's been um, involved um, in the process of bringing this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, you know, vaccine together. Mm -hmm. But of course, for everybody out, uh, at home right now, you know, we have to reinforce that uh, we're not out uh, of the dark yet. You've still got to continue adhering to all of those regulations. Wash your hands, sanitize, socially distance, wear a mask. It's very, very important. But Dr. Emil, thank you so much for joining us with that lovely update on COVID-19. Pleasure. Always a pleasure. We'll thank you, you after this. Making it to 2021 is a triumph. So celebrate with Emuenza and then a chance to win 5,000 Rand weekly for five weeks. Now keep boosting your immune system with Emuenza and tell us your survival story and what protected you from, say, a lion attack to a parachute fail. We want to hear your amazing stories. Reply to Emuenza's competition post on Afternoon Express's Facebook or Twitter pages and note that this competition runs until midnight, the 17th of March 2021. Teasers can be found on afternoonexpress.co.za. It's my feel-good breakfast.
Welcome back, everybody. This is your Feel Good Breakfast Show right here on SABC3. It is Health Tuesdays here on your Feel Good Breakfast Show. And we have a very special guest for you this morning after the success of her first book, Whole Bowl Food for Balance. Uh, Melissa Dalport joins us in studio to chat about her newest cookbook, Heal, Begin with Food. And we could do all... We could all do with a bit of healing throughout this space. And Melissa, it has been such a, an amazing journey because I followed you from the very beginning to see your connection with food and how you've been able to teach people about their relationship with this. It's a, it's a personal journey for you. And I, I remember reading in a book, your mess has become your message. Yes. Take us through that. Oh, so, you know, going back to sort of the beginning, the first time I was put onto a fad diet, I was 11 years old. Um, my parents did the best that they knew with the information that they had you know in the beginning a, a chubby baby was a happy baby and then all of a sudden it was like oh my gosh there's a weight problem so I got put onto a fad diet and that sort of set me up for the next 15 years of my life of fearing food and trying to control food because the goal was to be thin mm. the whole time that was the goal be thin and if you're thin you're celebrated you're better whatever the the association was and it rolled me in and out of toxic diet culture I could name a list as long as my arm of all the diets that I did and then one day I just had this penny drop where I was like wait a minute thin and healthy aren't the same thing and if I focus on getting healthy what would be possible so I did and I went down this rabbit hole of just seeking all the information I could find and tune, uh, tuning into whole food uh, eating and that's how whole bowl food for balance my first book was born subsequently with focusing on getting healthy I lost 25 kilograms oh, and wow. I also had a, a hormonal disease called polycystic ovarian syndrome and one of eight women in ch of childbearing age have this uh, disease and I was on a vast array of medications for it and every time a symptom popped up the doctor to gave me a tablet and it was just such a mess and then exactly that my mess became my message when I turned to Whole Foods I saw that food is actually the medicine and I lost the weight kept the weight off put all my symptoms into remission I'm on no medication and I just had to write about it so that was whole but then all of a sudden you lose the weight because the weight was part of the journey for me but then I realized hang on I've lost the weight but there's still this underlying unhappiness. What is that about? And that's really how Heal Begin With Food was born because I started to see that it's not just the food. Yes, the food is the medicine, but it's also about this emotional body that's driving our food decisions. You know, um, why am I unhappy if I'm not a certain shape? And looking at that and really looking at my life and what I call now as a health coach, your primary food, your career, your spirituality, your exercise, your relationships. How are those nourishing you and then your secondary food becomes secondary that which you put in your mouth and it's a lot easier to keep it in balance we all know what emotional eating is about so so true well, Melissa I think what you're speaking about is something that is so so pertinent when it comes to this overwhelming world of dieting mm. and just to kind of kick it off the script I love what you're saying that Thin doesn't mean healthy. Yeah. No. I personally went through this, this, this whole fad of trying to look good for a magazine cover. Looking shredded and ripped, yeah. I wasn't healthy. I was dehydrated, I was starved. But you look healthy. And that perception, mm -hmm. I think, is what you are changing right now. And I think that's what the first book did. Uh, it really kind of broke that mold and, and, and changed that relationship that you're speaking about. But what was then the reason for you deciding, I need to go through with a second edition? Um, you mentioned it was quite a tough challenge, obviously. And I I love yeah. what you're speaking about. So what prompted you to then decide to go ahead and write the second rendition? I think, honestly, it's my message, my message. If I can stop one person from being in that dark, twisted space, because I was there, I was anxious about food. I didn't know what to eat, where to turn. Do you eat the carb? Do you eat the high fat? Do you yeah. eat the meat? Do you not eat the meat? You know, then you're vegan. Then you, the, Everybody was telling me what to do to the point that it almost crippled me with anxiety. And then... As I moved into this journey, I just have to be able to share that message with other people that you don't have to fear the food. You don't need to be in fear of your body. Your body is this incredible machine that it never skips a heartbeat without you getting involved. You cut yourself at heels without you even getting involved. So for me, it just became this, it's, it's my drive, it's my purpose. I have to share this with the world that there's another way of being that you can honor your body and love your body and love your food and actually find that peace 
which is really important. Uh. I'm smiling from ear to ear just to hear your passion about this, but also the, the relationship you formed with food, but now using your platform to, to really inspire and educate other people mm. to have that connection with food. Because yes, you can go through diets, you can go through everything, but you have to heal from within. Mm. And of course, you at home, Melissa Delput will be hanging out with us the entire morning. She's going to be teaching out teaching us about living consciously with all of this. But if you would like to win one of two heal, begin with food uh, by Melissa Dalput cookbooks, you can head on over to our Facebook page and comment on the competition post right now and tell us what your healthy go-to meal is. The T's and C's can be found on expressoshow.com and the competition closes at midnight tonight. Happy entering. Right now we are down to the final hour of the show. Here is G with his news headlines. It's not G, it's Uncle Tabsy. But yes, time for us to take a look at that final uh, a, a bit of news headlines. We start off here locally where the DD Mabuza Comprehensive School in Bumalanga is the toast of the province. After three of its learners made it to the national top metric achievers list for 2020. Peace Pangisa, Eric Mavimbela and Mtobi Sislachwayo represent the province among the national best performers. The school, situated in a poor farming community, specializes in technical studies and agriculture. Culture. Pangisa was named the country's best learner in technical maths and Tlachwayo second best. Mavimbela came third in the country in technical science. Congratulations. A new clinical trial overseen by researchers at the University of Cape Town is testing the efficacy of a new COVID-19 vaccine with a different approach. The HAD5 T-cell vaccine holds promise to protect against current and future variants, including the worrying new variant which is prominent in South Africa. The first phase of this clinical trial involves administering the vaccine through the Welcome Center for Infectious Diseases Research in Africa's Kailicha site. If successful, the T-cell vaccine could be administered as a supplementary booster in pill form to offer better protection. In international news, Italy's ambassador to the Democratic Republic of Congo has been killed in an attack in the east of the country. Luca Atanasio, 43 years old, died in hospital yesterday after the United Nations convoy he was traveling in came under fire near Gomad. The convoy was reportedly with the UN's World Food Program. An Italian military police officer traveling with the envoy and a Congolese driver were also killed. According to officials at nearby Virunga National Game Park, it was an attempted kidnapping. Japan has appointed a Minister of Loneliness this month to tackle the country's rising suicide rates. Last year, suicide rates in Japan rose for the first time in 11 years, particularly amongst women. More people died from suicide in Japan in October than the total number of COVID-19 deaths up to that point in 2020. The new Japan Minister of Loneliness will try and reduce loneliness and social isolation among residents. Loneliness has long been an issue in Japan, often discussed alongside hiki Komori, a people or other people who live in extreme social isolation. And now news of a further honor for one of South Africa's great champions, sprint sensation and current 400 meter world and Olympic record holder, Wade Fanikirk has been announced as the latest Laureus ambassador. He joins an illustrious group of esteemed South African sporting icons at the Laureus uh, family, including Bafada Bafada soccer legend, Lucas Radebe and Springbok rugby legends, Brian Habana, as well as Jean de Villiers. Born in Cryfontein near Cape Town, Fanikek took up sprinting in 2009, aged 17. On a magical evening of track and field in Rio in 2016, Fanikek battered Michael Johnson's long-standing world record set in 1999. Chairperson of the Laureus Sport for Good Foundation, South Africa, Monet de Plessis, says that he was elated to officially welcome Wade to the Laureus family. And he said uh, that it had been remarkable to witness his rise in world sport and his impact in inspiring South Africans, both young and old. He said Wade had shown tremendous character throughout his career and he is looking forward to working with him to uplift communities across South Africa. Glorious has uh, raised more than uh, 150 uh, pounds, uh, rather 150 million pounds, and it's changed the lives of more than 6 million children and uh, young people since 2000. And that's where we leave it for this morning. Here's a final look at the world of sports with Graham. Thank you.
Um, we certainly congratulate Wade on that honour. It makes a nice segue into our sporting headlines this morning. Cricket in firm focus today. Let's start here in South Africa where the CSA T20 Challenge continued yesterday as the Lions overcame the Titans and the Knights beat out the Cape Cobras. So the Lions recording an 18-run victory over the Titans. That was ultimately based on the Duckworth Lewis Sturd method in a rain-reduced 15-over match played out in Kingsmead. In the earlier fixture, Miguel Pretorius, who really has put his hand up in this tournament, he hit two Two sixes and one four in the final over to help the Knights to a three wicket win over the Cape Cobras. So that CSA T20 Challenge action will continue today with the Warriors taking on the Cobras at 10 a.m. And then this afternoon, the Lions take on the Knights at 2.30 p.m. Well, staying with cricket, but a little further afield, New Zealand claimed a 53 run victory over Australia in the first T20 international match in Christchurch yesterday. Devon Conway's unbeaten 99 from just 59 deliveries, guiding the Black Caps to a very impressive win in the first of their five T20s. New Zealand recovering from a shaky start, 19 for three at one point, to post 184 for five. Too much for Australia, who were bowled out for just 131 in 17.3 overs. That five-match series will continue in Dunedin this coming Thursday. And then finally, on to tennis. We expected a bit of a move. Newly crowned Australian Open champion Naomi Osaka has now moved up one spot to second in the WTA rankings released yesterday. The 23-year-old Japanese tennis sensation I'm sure is on her way to number one beat Jennifer Brady, the American, in straight sets in that Australian Open final to win her fourth Grand Slam title. Ashley Barty does still remain the world number one despite being knocked out of the Australian Open in the quarterfinals. That's a wrap of your sport for this Thursday morning. Let's take one last look at some of your beautiful sunrise pictures and see what the weather has in store in your neck of the woods. I'll start off by saying thank you so much to all um, our viewers that have taken the time to share their parts of the country with us. We love seeing how you start your day. We kicked off the morning with Little Honolo Bridget from Nailstrom and Alistair Errington in Johannesburg. We then headed over to Bologwane where, where Katleho Temba shared this lovely image. And last but not least, Laura Pele from Chatsworth Durban shared this picture of her area. Please continue to share your sunrise photos with us on the Expresso Face page we love interacting with you we now hop over to the US to give the city of Jefferson the capital city of Missouri a brief weather update Jefferson City experiences hot rainy summers and cold winters thunderstorms are common in both spring and summer while light snow is a regular occurrence during winter today you can expect plenty of sunshine with a mild peak of 16 degrees Celsius we bring it back down south. There has been much excitement. The normally bone-dry Kalahari in the northern Cape after the Kuruman River started flowing through the area for the first time in more than 40 years. The last significant flow in the area was in 1976. Locals are making the most of it, bringing their children to witness the rare sight. Some are even lucky enough to catch fish. The abundance of water in the Kalahari is also a boost to its tourism industry with visitors streaming to the area. Meanwhile, heavy downpours in northern Limpopo yesterday have left large areas without power supply. ESCOM says a number of substations rather, and power lines in the Bembe area have been damaged by storms and rain. Floods have caused chaos and roads and bridges were washed away. Numerous communities have also been cut off from the outside world. Here's a more extensive look at the temperatures in your part of the country. Polokwane 1627, Bombela a partly cloudy day with a low of 21, reaching a high of 29 degrees. Pretoria, your temperatures range from a minimum of 19, reaching a maximum of 27 degrees. Johannesburg, your maximum for the day is 25 from a low of 18. Be on the lookout for some thunder showers. Mahi Gang, 42% chance of thunder showers forecast in your part of the country. 40% thunder showers in Glex drop with a low of 18 reaching a high of 25. Kimberley it's a rainy day in your part of the country 1624. Bloemfontein you kick off the morning with a low of 14 reaching a high of 20 with 66 percent thunder, thunder showers rather. Richards Bay 2232. Peter Maritzburg it's a rainy day 1725. Durban wet conditions in your part of the country 2329. Mtata starts the day with a low of 17 reaching an afternoon high of 31 
29 degrees. East London, it's a mostly sunny day, reaching a maximum of 27 degrees. And Cradock, uh, with the second highest country in the country, your maximum is 33 degrees. And Port Elizabeth starts off the morning with a minimum of 16, reaching a maximum of 26 and we move over to George, starting off the day with a minimum of 14, peaking at 23 degrees. Cape Town, 1924. Rooster, it's a sunny day in your part of the country with a low of 12, reaching a high of 31. And Sutherland starts off with a cool 8 degrees, reaching a high of 26. And Uppington starts off the day with a minimum of 18, reaching a maximum of 34 degrees. This was the final look at your stunning sunrise pictures and the weather forecast for the day. Remember, what Whatever part of the country you're in, whatever the weather and whatever your plans are, make sure to have yourselves a feel-good kind of day. So we're loving the fact that we've got acoustic element in the house and they're about to perform an anthem of sorts. I think it became an anthem over lockdown when so many people needed to show that sense of solidarity that we were still connected to the world. I'm talking about the song Bella Ciao and here to perform it with their exuberance and their unbelievable talent. It is, um, uh, of course, a, a tune that was composed by... Um, a, 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 Manu Pilas, who created it for a, a series that was streamed called Money Heist. And obviously last year it became viral during the, the, the lockdown period. And you will get an understanding of just why it has become such a firm favorite. And you're going to love it this morning here to perform it, our acoustic element. <laughs> Thank you, man. Cheeky, <laughs> cheeky with a little black in there. Absolutely love it. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us this morning. You are a joy to host. Thank and you very much. Congratulations on 10 unbelievable years of success. Yes, to another 10, another 20. Acoustic-element.co.za is where you can book them, most importantly, but find a wealth of really cool information uh, about the band and, of course, all of their live streams. So much awesome content to take in. Until the next time, because you guys will be back. Um, <laughs> it's been, as always, such a pleasure. And we are so proud of you guys. Thank we love you. So we will see you in a moment. We're going to be talking teen suicide in just a moment. So stick around for that. Oh, you can make
Welcome back, everybody. This is your Feel Good <laughs> Breakfast Show right on SABC3. We're about to get into a very somber conversation right now, but so vitally important Teen Suicide Prevention Week, which took place from the 14th to the 21st of February, highlighted awareness around teen depression and suicide. Raising awareness about teen suicide prevention comes at an important time as you continue to fight the pandemic and the matric final results being released today. Now, according to the World Health Organization, suicide remains the third leading cause of death in 15 to 19 year olds and of course clinical psychologist Daniel Goldstone joins us in studio to share his knowledge on suicide prevention. Daniel so good to have you with us this morning. Thank you for having me. Um, I, I was saying it's strange to look forward to a discussion like this but because it's so vitally important and I think the reality I think as soon as I had kids that my whole perception of, of what it is for a young person to make their way through life changed mm. dramatically every element every statistic that we reveal is heartbreaking in itself the fact that you know what you read in that that intro the fact that it's the third highest cause of death in that age group that in itself is so alarming mm. are the rates higher now have we seen a shift obviously we've experienced probably one of the most difficult years in recent memory for young people especially especially considering matric and exams and pressures and learning and all of those spaces where do we sit where are the figures right now better or worse than, than in the past? So we don't have kind of live figures, but from my knowledge, we haven't seen any major increase. I think there's been a massive increase in the rates of sort of anxiety and depression amongst the youth and the general population, given the coronavirus pandemic and the lockdowns that everybody's been going through and experiencing. So <clears throat> people have been experiencing greater rates of suicidal ideation, which are just thoughts about suicide. Yeah. We haven't seen an increase in the rates. Yeah, um, like G, myself, I was also very maybe excited to speak about it because just maybe we can help someone with just having this conversation yeah. like this. When it comes to stresses involved in teen suicide, um, what are they? What are, what are we seeing that is leading uh, teenagers to this point? Mm -hmm. I think, you know, mental illness is associated with suicide. Obviously, that one we've got to look out for. And... I think it's interesting that you guys have said that you're excited to talk about this, which is a good thing because we don't talk about suicide. And it's exactly talking about it that is the thing that we can do to help prevent it. So teens go through all kinds of stresses. You know, everyone at the moment, the matric results have just come out yesterday. The matrics are all looking forward to hopefully receiving their results. But it can be a major stress point in their lives. So much pressure put on them at that point, yeah. Absolutely, you know, and that can come from sort of a narrowing of focus to think that this is the only thing that matters when there are more things that matter. And if the, the results don't go well. There are other things that people can do to make up for that. But also things like relationship stresses, both in one's family or in romantic relationships or in friendships, being socially excluded, bullying is a major cause of, of mental illness um, in, in the, our teenage group. So those are some of the things that might lead someone to feel suicidal. 
That being said, we know the contributing factors, and maybe that's a warning sign in itself. Can you predict suicidal intent, intention? Can you see it, or is it you know, the, the danger that it is too hidden? What, what are the signs? So there are definite warning signs that someone might be going through a difficult time and might be experiencing some suicidal thoughts. Things like changes in appetite or in sleep, um, either more sleep or less sleep, withdrawing from family and friends, um, feeling um, more, more sad and down most of the time. And this is like an unusual shift from what that person's baseline is. Mm -hmm. So if a person is normally an introvert, we were speaking about this, if they're a bit of an introvert, then that is normal for them, right? But if there's a sudden change in their behavior, that's the thing to look out for. If they're crying all the time, if they're talking about suicide, if they're talking about being dead, if they're saying they don't want to be around, posting on online forums potentially, those are all the big warning signs to look out for. We, we spoke about it, it's, we find it more often uh, between an age from 15 to 19 years old, but at what point do we reach out if it's a friend, if it's a colleague, because at that age you very much wanting to be in your space, you don't maybe want to open up to anyone about being or feeling this way, at what point do we as colleagues, as friends, as South Africa reach out to someone if we do see these, uh, these warning signs? Mm -hmm. I think that's a really important question because I think as soon as you're worried, you reach out. There's no harm in asking someone, hey, how's it going? I noticed that you haven't come to the last couple of social things we've been doing. I noticed that you're feeling a little bit down recently. Is everything all right? What's going on? One of the big things with suicide is that we don't talk about it, and it is talking about it that helps prevent it. So when someone is feeling suicidal, they're already feeling vulnerable, they're already feeling isolated and alone, they're already feeling perhaps even ashamed that they're having these thoughts because there's big stigma and people think that you know, you're weak if you're feeling so small, mm. if you've got mental illness. So they are probably not going to reach out from their own. So if you're worried about someone who's feeling suicidal, ask them, hey, are you doing all right? I've noticed things are different. Can I help in some way? Ask them directly about suicide. Have you had any thoughts about killing yourself? Have you had thoughts about suicide? Yeah, act on it. If you feel the impulse, act on it. Absolutely. And perhaps, and it's amazing, and often my discussions with experts such as yourself, talking to someone who is neutral, maybe not connected within your family, is the best way to go about it because mm. they, they are a step back. And I think the South, Af South African Depression and Anxiety Group is a, an unbelievable resource. They, we have worked with them on so many campaigns. They really are amazing at what they do, and they could be the voice that you are needing to hear. So we're going to keep their details on our social media platforms, on Screen, but you can give them a call on 0800 567 567. That is a number that is so vitally important to broadcast during this time of teen suicide prevention. We're going to continue this discussion. I want to focus on the trick results and what parents can do if those results have been disappointing before it escalates. Oh, thank you so much. I think we will definitely be catching up again on that conversation, so you can tune in for that. But before we get to it, uh, we're still joined in the studio here with Melissa Dalport, and uh, we're in the kitchen, and we're sharing some recipes from a newly released cookbook, Heal, Begin With Food. And we're about to make some grilled broccoli with mushrooms and halloumi. Mm, does it not sound good? And this is the recipe that does, in fact, yes, it has dairy, but also has two heads of broccoli. So making this dish for your family might get you one step closer to having your children feast on some greens and of course enjoy it too. Now I must also put a disclaimer out here, this meal also does contain high levels of calcium, vitamin K and both of which are important for bone health and the prevention of osteoporosis. But enough further ado, let Melissa take over here and show us how it is done. Well you're definitely going to be helping <laughs> me in here. Okay I got you. So where do we begin? I'm seeing colors which I love. Yes. I'm seeing variety and I'm seeing some macros. So Absolutely let's go through this. That. What's happening? So I love what you touch on there with the colors because I always say that to my clients. We want to look at at all the colors of the rainbow when we're eating our food because every single color offers us a different vitamin, a different macro, micronutrient, yeah. and that's the fuel that our body needs. So looking at all the colors is a very positive thing. What we've got here is some large brown mushrooms that we're going to grill, get that nice smoky flavor Ooh, going. Yes, we've got some broccoli, like you said, it's high in vitamin C. It's, it's actually like a superfood. There is so many vitamins in broccoli. There's so much. We can actually carry on speaking while you make this meal because I think we're going to be chatting forever. Exactly, we'll chat we forever. Are such so we're going to start with 
I usually either use coconut oil or olive oil. Okay. You can play around with whichever one you want. I prefer cooking with coconut oil though because the coconut oil actually um, has a higher smoke point and olive oil is a better healthy fat to put over your dishes at the end. Okay, so, we've so got to you turn recommend this down. drizzling oh. with olive oil? Drizzling with olive oil with at the coconut. end and cooking with coconut oil nice. um, and preferably the odor, not the odorless free one because again that's another further processed food. What we're trying to avoid is processed foods and so actually... keep it as whole food as possible. Exactly, as exactly. Food as you can. Exactly. I love that. So, so you, you, you're basically starting up by, are you searing the... Um, yeah, we're going to saute some leeks over here. Just okay. to make sure that is Sauteing on some leeks. I like yeah, that. I'm I like that. Add a yeah. bit more coconut oil. And you've got some coconut in there and you're also getting the mushrooms going by getting yeah. a grill on there. That's it. Okay. And we're going to grill the broccoli. So the broccoli, you can just get your broccoli head, slice down the middle and turn it into steaks. And it's quite cool. I love them because they look like trees. I think they about. do actually. <laughs> the fact that you've been talking about it and the way you're displaying this, it seems so cool because I would imagine this is a really cool trick or a neat tip to kind of get your kids to eat more veg, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, look, in here I have a kids chapter okay. because I feel that we've got to hand this information to the next generation. If we eat better, not only do we look after ourselves, but we look after our planet. And I think that that's quite a relevant topic at the moment yeah. because our planet is unwell and we need to do better. So, so this is a great way to, like you mentioned earlier, sneak in the veg, get your kids to really enjoy it. Okay. Um, and yeah, you've just got to make the vegetables really appealing and know that what you're cooking for yourself, you can actually cook for your kids as well. I if like you're that. roasting a butternut, if you're a stressed mom that doesn't have time, pop a whole butternut in the oven, a little bit of uh, coconut oil, a little bit of salt and pepper over it, roast it for an hour at 180, bam, you've got a roasted butternut. Beautiful. Half for you for dinner on your salad, other half mashed up with some cinnamon, there's your baby's food rather than jarred food that you buy from a store that's filled with nasty right. chemicals and sugars. All right, well, Bobby, before we run out of time, I really want to find out how we get to the end of this meal, and I know mm. we can talk forever. I know and we I know can. And us as parents, our habits will fall on our kids, so I can't agree with you more, but let's get to this recipe because Perfect. I cannot wait to chow down. <laughs> Perfect. So what we've got is we've got the broccoli yeah. that's going to grill. We've got the mushrooms that we're going to grill, get that nice smoky flavor okay. going. And then we've got our leeks that are sauteing. What we also do have that's been prepped for us, is some fried halloumi. We mm. just put it in the pan, no extra oil. It's got its own fat, enough of yeah. it. And we've got some beautiful sage, and then to top off, some chili and some almonds. And oh, it just wow. creates a really beautiful, crunchy topping to, to contrast the soft creaminess. Yeah. And again, cheese. another beautiful meat alternative here. You're obviously getting all the protein, the good fats, and everything else that we do need, but without even any addition of meat. So, absolutely loving it. What happens with all of this? We're just chucking it in? Yeah, we're just chucking it in. Luckily, I've got a beautiful plate that's been prepared here on the side. Once your <laughs> leeks are ready and once your uh, broccoli is nice and grilled, I mean, it can take a little bit of time. So we're going to let these guys go a little bit longer. But once they're grilled, basically what you're going to do is you're going to start to layer your salad up. So, well, your dish up. Yes. I call it a salad, believe it or not. But you're going to layer your mushrooms, your broccoli, your halloumi, the sage, and then you're going to top it off with the chili and the almonds and create a beautiful crunch with it. Beautiful crunch indeed. And if you want to see the end product, which is just below your book over there, it looks like, right. to be honest, it yeah. looks like a grilled braai fusion, but there's yeah. no meat, which I absolutely love. But guys, we're going to be seeing more Melissa later on in the show for another edition. But before we get to it, here's something cool for you. To win one of two Heal Begin With Foods books by Melissa Dalport. And that's a cookbook. We are doing an epic giveaway. And all you got to do is head over to our Facebook page and comment on the competition post and tell us what your healthy go-to meal is. And of course, our T's and C's do apply and the competition closes at midnight tonight so get get entering Melissa thank you so much we will see you soon see you soon <laughs> looking for fantastic health and weight loss benefits without a lifestyle change or being on a diet well ShapeLine 50 billion from Proven Probiotics is the first ever probiotic to offer scientifically proven weight loss while at the same time boosting immune and digestive health. That's why we think ShapeLine 50 billion may well be the world's most effective probiotic. Available at Discam and Clicks.
It's my feel good breakfast show. You are back with your feel good breakfast show here on SABC3. And of course, continuing with our health discussion on teen suicide prevention, uh, clinical psychologist Daniel Goldstone is still with us. Daniel will be telling us more about what help and support is out there for teens who are struggling with suicidal thoughts. A vital, important conversation, especially now because we know the matric results are out today. Learners are feeling like it's the end of the road if they're not getting the results they're hoping for. What can we as parents do to maybe put their mind at ease and tell them that it's not the end of the road, it's only the beginning of a journey? Probably just say exactly that. Mm. You know, I think I think lead with kindness and care. Mm. Often, you know, metric results are built up from grade 11, you know, in schools that they are this huge, huge event and learners get very, very stressed and anxious about them. And it is important. I mean, they do, they do have some sort of bearing over whether you can get entrance into university or not, but it's not the be all and end all. And often learners tend to think that, that it's the matric results are all that matters. And if you didn't do well, that's it. There's no opportunity to, mm. to, to repair that. Mm. But there are opportunities and there are other things that they can do if they didn't get the results they want. The conversation, Daniel, around suicide is a growing one. It's certainly a trending one, for lack of a better word, all over the world. I mean, we're mm. hearing stories. I was reporting just in the news now that Japan's appointed a minister of loneliness because people are committing suicide at the highest uh, rates. Mm. In South Africa specifically, are there times uh, where we experience a peak in suicides uh, amongst teens or just in general? Mm -hmm. So amongst teens, there isn't really any good data around whether there are any peaks. So sometimes, uh, interestingly enough, the holiday period is often a sort of a increased risk of suicidal behavior in people, mm. um, which is ironic because we think that that's a time of people coming together. Yes. And of course it is, but for those who don't have people to come together with, mm they feel lonely, right? So that exacerbates that loneliness, which makes suicide seem like a more um, attractive option at that time. Mm -hmm. But yeah, not amongst teens. It's hard to say, right? Because, sorry, uh, Jamie That's Lee, is that it's hard to pinpoint the triggers or are there specific triggers mm. that uh, data is able to track mm. uh, from, I suppose, suicide notes and conversations with loved ones mm. uh, that are coming through as, as, as the more common triggers for people committing suicide? Mm. Mm. So I think triggers are any stressful events, mm. you know, so um, a massive relationship uh, breakup or huge fight or something like that can often trigger an, an impulsive suicidal thought which could lead to an impulsive suicide attempt. Mm. But sometimes the triggers are kind of more insidious and are more noticeable mm. actually you know so there's this idea that suicide is not preventable because we don't know what mm. what predicts it but of course there are many things that we can that we can identify yeah. like we were speaking about earlier low mood withdrawing from people not engaging in activities that people like mm. uh, those kinds of things yeah mm -hmm. here's my question to you if someone is suicidal will they always be suicidal is it mm. again is it always going to be triggered or can they actually outgrow it in a sense mm -hmm. well i suppose i'd ask the question if someone has flu, well, they always have flu. And the answer is no. Mm. So suicidal thoughts are something that happen at a particular point in someone's life, you know. And it's often related just to being under immense pressure or stress and not having people to talk to, not having the resources or not knowing how to access the resources because the resources are there. Yeah. Yeah. I have often seen on social media, on Twitter, um, many posts in, 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 in the last couple of years where someone really is asking for help and they're crying out uh, to be helped. Uh, they may say that they are contemplating suicide, for yes. example. Yes. How do we help someone in that state? How do you take someone who sends you a message, for example, or speaks to you and says, I actually just want to end it all. How can you help them? How can you be there for them and support them? I think the first thing is don't panic. Because mm -hmm. I think that often when people become aware that someone that they love or that they know is suicidal, they don't know what to do themselves. Yeah. So they think, sure, but I don't know what I can do about this. Mm. Should I reach out? Shouldn't I? Maybe it's best to leave it. Mm. I don't know if I'm the right person to help. But you are the right person to help. So if you know that someone is suicidal, mm. the first thing to do is ask them how they're doing. So just show care and compassion. Mm -hmm. How's it going? What's going on? Why are you saying that? Are you stressed? Do you need some more support? Mm. 
If the person is acutely suicidal, so if they say, listen, I've got this plan, I want to do it tonight at this time, and yeah. you know, then that's an emergency, right? So mm. then you've got to do your best to get that person to an emergency room as fast as possible. Mm. But that happens in a very, very small percentage of um, the cases when we know that someone is suicidal. Often they're just thinking about it. So reaching out and finding a way to help them is important. And of course, linking them with the resources like the South African Depression and Anxiety Group, um, or linking them with the mental health care provider a psychologist or a psychiatrist yeah. that can be very very helpful oh, well there certainly is help and uh, the details are on your screen right now uh, if you haven't taken note of those as the South African depression and anxiety group their suicide crisis line is always available to take calls from people who need to speak to someone uh, all of those professionals are trained to be able to listen to you one yes but they really do care and the number is 0800-567-567 and of course, if you have a question on teen suicide prevention for Daniel, make sure to give us a call on 021-110-5552, or you can send through your questions via our social media platforms. He will be answering all of your questions in just a few moments. Welcome back. Thank you so much for keeping it locked on a Health Tuesday. And we are discussing a vitally important topic this morning. A big thank you to every individual who has sent through your question on teen suicide prevention via our social media platforms. We'll try to get through as many of those as we can in just a moment. Um, and of course, opening the lines. And we've got clinical psychologist Daniel Goldstone, who is ready to answer your questions. And we've got someone on the line right now. Uh, Ken Raj from McDowell in the Mother City, Cape Town. Very good morning. How are you? I'm fantastic. How are yourself? I'm very good, thanks. Um, what is your, your question for Daniel or your comment this morning? Hi, Daniel. Good morning. So basically, uh, as we are talking matric results today, um, I'm sure there's a lot of matriculants 
basically um, understanding or basically going through a path whereby failure is going to be happening around. But for me, failure is a road to success at the end of the day. And a lot of teens or matriculants will feel like giving up. Do you think suicide will be related in terms of impulsiveness at that point? All right, good question. Yeah, yeah it is a good question. I mean, there's a possibility that people can use this as a triggering event, but hopefully not. I think, like Ken Raj is saying, um, failure can be a path to success, and hopefully some of our matriculants will see it that way this year. Um, how, how do we prompt that? Because that's quite a, an, you know, when, uh, it's taken me my good 40 years on this planet to start getting to a point where I can understand mm. that you need failure to, to birth success. How do you instill that in a, in a young person who's going through something like this? Mm. I think to broaden the focus, you know, so mm. because the matric results are such a built up event in every matriculant's life, and rightly so, yeah. but it becomes the focal point and suddenly they can't see anything else. So I think to broaden the focus and kind of remember that this is just one event in hopefully a long and healthy life and that there are many other ways that they can find success, find their path, do what's best for them. And nothing is final in that space Absolutely. either. Nothing is final in that space. Well, we've had a host of great comments come through on our social media platforms as well. We're going to touch on a couple of those right now. The first one is from Mishka Patel. She says, just have a nice cup of espresso and chill. You always get a second chance in life. Never give up. You are healthy and stay blessed. Coming from Mishka Patel, we have one from Angel Ledwaba. She says, if you didn't make it, try again. It was hectic last year. Do it again with more effort and hope. Um, and then one from Precious as well saying, I got a bachelor's degree. Yay! We are celebrating with you. All the matriculants getting the results today. Um, we've got um, more comments coming through here as well. Uh, for Rosa coming up saying uh, be strong and always remember that God is in the best of planners um, there is um a reason. Uh, and there is a reason for the design or the way things turn out. Try again. Um, you know, that seems to be a resounding amount of positivity coming out, um, which is fantastic. But it's, mm. it can be a very, very difficult time. So maybe we should round off speaking specifically to our matrix. What was your, your last piece of advice for anyone that is, is struggling with what they've gone through over mm. the last day? Mm. I think, you know, to listen to everyone who's commented and thanks to them for putting those comments because it the message that they're sending is that there are other opportunities. You can try again. This isn't the be-all and end-all. Daniel, thank you so much for joining us this morning. A hugely vital discussion. We're going to keep the information that um, we have been broadcasting all morning up on our social media platforms. But there you have it again. A number to have written down on speed dial, undoubtedly. The South African and Depression and Anxiety Group, SADAG, is a brilliant resource. Um, please make use of it. 0800 567 567. Um, perhaps speaking to someone who, as we said earlier, is a neutral that you don't know personally might be the key to unlocking it, but there is always someone ready to listen. If you are feeling in any way that the pressure of the world, that your anxiety is getting the better of you, speak to someone right now. Thank you so much, team. This is a very important conversation to have, particularly during this very important day with matric results being released this morning. To all matriculants out there, whatever the outcome, you are destined for success. Speaking of success, after the success of her first book haul, Bowl Food for Balance, Melissa Dalport is back in our kitchen with her newly released cookbook that combines her love for food and healthy living. Heal, begin with food. This morning, she's here to share a recipe she created out of wanting the comfort of the classic mac and cheese and cheesy cauliflower bakes from her childhood. The only difference is that this one comes with a vegan, is it bechamel? Bechamel. Bechamel. It's vegan bechamel. bechamel. A little bit of French, darling. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Actually, the accent is very vital. Vegan bechamel that packs all the flavor with none of the glute. Oh, Melissa, it's such a pleasure mm. to have you on the show. 
Thank you. Thank you for having me. I mean, it's been absolutely a treat cooking mm. with you guys this morning. Please take us through the, 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 the first set now, the, the ingredients we have on the counter. Yeah, what I love about this recipe is that it's actually part one, part two, part three done. Okay. Get it in the oven. It's so divine. Mm. We've got beautiful cauliflower florets that we're going to pop into our roasting tray. Then we're going to add in some beautiful cherry tomatoes, mm. nice and plump and makes me think of summer. Yes. We've got our gorgeous chickpeas, high in protein, high in fiber, mm. high in vitamin K, an absolute uh, uh, must to include. Did you prepare these yourself or did you buy them in a can? Look, I think that we do the best that we can when mm -hmm. it comes to our health journey and we've got to meet ourselves where we're at. I would mm. rather us having a tinned chickpea than an unhealthy fast food takeaway. Mm. But in an ideal world, we get our chickpeas, we soak them, we yes. cook them for two hours. We have all the time in the world with a you know, beautiful glass of wine, but sometimes we are rushed. Yeah. So tinned chickpeas do work, give them a rinse, uh, out of their brine, dry them off, and then cook with them. Yes. Awesome. Beautiful. So we're going to add a little bit of coconut oil. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned earlier, coconut oil is just much better to uh, roast with and cook with because it's got a higher smoke point. Okay. So it doesn't become rancid like olive oil if it gets overheated. Mm. Um, Wait, just on that point, what's ran ranc rancid? Rancid. So it goes off. So olive oil, if you cook with it, you actually destroy the health properties mm. of it because it's a healthy fat. Yeah. So essentially what we really want to focus on with our olive oils, cold press, extra virgin mm. and raw over a salad or at the end of the meal because that's the healthy fat that the body needs. I see. So this is what you would pop into the oven and get Already roasted. Already standing. I mean, it's so quick and easy. Mm. Give it a good toss, some season with some salt and pepper. Over here we have our crumbs. We've got some beautiful chili flakes for a little bit of spice, some garlic, you know, because that's just the yumminess and extra you flavor. We've got some cumin and then we've got some paprika and a little bit of cayenne pepper mm. just for that extra hits of spice. So I'm going to task you to just toss that up and Not mix that up. Not a problem. What I love about this recipe so far, it just infuses different flavors, different spices, and it's all natural ingredients. Exactly. And those spices are so healing. So mm. good for the digestive system. Kind pepper fires up the digestive system. Mm. If we include turmeric, it's anti-inflammatory. So it just really packs a punch for our health. In here, I've got some coconut oil. This is our bechamel sauce. And this is such a great one because if you master this, mm. you can put it on anything. anything. So initially, what we do is I use spelt flour mm -hmm. rather than white commercialized bleached flour because essentially white flour is bleached so you're eating bleach. Really. You see what happens now whenever scary. we go to shops we just buy whatever is there in front of us without really knowing the properties of the of the products that we're purchasing. Exactly and that's why I really do encourage everybody out there to read your labels. Mm. Stop worrying about the nutritional square on how many calories yeah. you're eating because the calories aren't the problem the chemicals are mm. and when you read ingredients more often than not you'll see what nasties are hiding in our food and those are the nasties that are making us sick mm. so I use spelt flour it's made from an ancient grain and it's absolutely high in protein and delicious you cook it off with your um, equal ratio to coconut oil mm -hmm. just to get rid of that floury taste at the end you want to make sure that that's cooked out everything is low temperature that's it and then I might need you to help me whisk okay or pour you want to <laughs> be the pourer pour. you be I'll the pourer pour. I'll be the whisker we're going to make a team here so this is what your bechamel will look like and as you you can pour for me very slowly there you go keep pouring keep pouring as you do that your bechamel sauce and then you can stop for a second there you go am yeah. i done now give it a second we just got to let it thicken and as you keep whisking your bechamel sauce is going to thicken and mm. really what you want to look for is a thick creamy lush sauce then with this one what makes it so such a big kick and so delicious yeah. is we add uh, nutritional flakes i love and that nutritional flakes is something you can buy at your local health store mm. it tastes like cheese it's like the healthy version of you know like a cheese sprinkle mm. I was going to mention a brand but we won't do that <laughs> but this is a healthy version and if you add it in there it makes this beautiful creamy yeah. cheese sauce that you can add onto dishes I love it so much okay listen this is the final product if you missed any steps make sure to head on over to our website expressoshow.com Melissa Delport is still in the building make sure also to get yourself the stunning book Heal Begin With Food thank you so much thank you so much for having me it's been beautiful. a treat <laughs> literally <laughs>
It's my feel good breakfast show. So, following a proud tradition of doing songs that we have no idea <laughs> what to do in, we're going to have a little bit of fun with our Tuesday karaoke today. We're going to let Queen B herself take center stage. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Oh, is that, is that who I am? <laughs> yes, who you are. No, no, we know you love her. Yes, yes, I you do. You absolutely love I'm her. I'm absolutely her. devoted to her. So, you've chosen quite possibly the most difficult song. <laughs> Ever to perform. Because I believe in all of you guys and myself <laughs> in a collective effort, we're going to be able to bring Beyonce to life here. Right on the yeah. stage, right? On the stage. No, yep. we're going to give it, you know, we will. We'll give it a shot. We're going to have a little bit of fun with this. Um, and please feel free at home to do it, to film yourself and send us the pictures <laughs> and the videos because we want to see it. Are you ready, gang? Are yeah, ready? let's go. Woo. Take it away, B. <laughs> Take a deep breath. <laughs> all right. Yes! So crazy right now, uh -huh. most incredibly, it's your girl, B, it's your boy, <laughs> Young, you ready? Okay. Here you go. Oh, 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 no, no. oh, 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 I touch on you more and more every time When you leave, I'm begging you not to go Call your name two, three times in a row Such a funny thing for me to try to explain How I'm feeling that my pride is the one you blame Hey, hey I still don't understand Just how your love can do what no one else can Got me looking so crazy right now Your love's got me looking so crazy right now Come on. Got me looking so crazy right now Your love's got me looking so crazy right now Oh, 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 Looking so crazy in love. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Young Hook. Yeah. Young Hook. Young Hook. Young Hook. Young Hook. Young Hook. Young Hook. The one and only stick body, but the pockets fat like Tony. Soprano, the rock handle like Van Axel. I shake the phonies, man. You can get next to the genuine article. I do not sing, though. I sling, though. I anything I believe yeah. in, yo. Hey, Rail. <laughs> Crazy bring your whole set, man. Jay-Z in the range. Crazy in the range. They can't figure him out. They're like, hey, he's insane. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, sir. I'm cut from a different cloth. The texture in the best foot chinchilla. Oh, oh. <laughs> I've been a killer. Chain smokers are you. I think I I got the name Hover. I've been realer than the game's over. Fall back. <laughs> Young ever since the label. Platinum the game. We don't have a plot. Can't surprise <laughs> me. I'm not myself. Lately, Baby, I'm foolish. I don't do yes, this. Baby. I can name myself. Baby, Baby I don't care. Got the best of me. And then you're, you're making a fool of me. Got the song. I don't care who sees this. Baby, you got Whoa. Crazy, crazy, crazy. <laughs> Woo! Oh, yes! My God. Wowzers. <laughs> that was an exercise. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, that was not easy, Doug. No, it's not. No, no, that is wow. not the most difficult song, I think, in the world to well, sing that. The fact uh, that... say we apologize. Yeah. If you're watching right now, I'm so sorry. Yeah. We're so sorry for that. The thing is, how Beyonce and Jay-Z can be on a stage for two hours and Beyonce can carry that entire thing without running out of breath like I did five seconds in. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> ah, man. That's why she's the queen, man. Maybe you've got a song you want us yeah. to sing. Maybe there's a better suggestion, something that's a little bit easier, <laughs> just perhaps. And we'd love to hear from you. Please let us know on our social media platforms. And if you were performing along or you could do a lot better, <laughs> 
<laughs> That's what I'll say. Yeah. We set the bar quite low. Yeah. <laughs> We'd love to see your videos. We'd love to see your moves. We'd love to see your reps and uh. see what you got. Crazy. What did you say? Crazy and deranged. My flow, so what? ROC in the building. Hello. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, man. Well, thank you so much. That was our rendition of Crazy in Love. That's your Tuesday karaoke. <laughs> well, well done, Queen B. They did a fantastic job this Tuesday. You at home have a say which song we can perform next week for Karaoke Tuesday. Head over to Express or Facebook page. We do this bright and early tomorrow. This is your Feel Good Breakfast Show. Woo! Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Celebrate the month of love with your family favorites. Made with love by Clover. Uh, never feel good production.